Gouda. Munster is an underrated grilled cheese cheese. Mm. For sure. It's a good one. Havarti is not the best for grilled cheese. It's a little too soft. I don't do a lot of Havarti, but yeah, Munster melts well. Gouda. That'll make a hell of a grilled cheese. I've never tried Gouda on grilled cheese. You do smoke Gouda? That sounds good. Even stronger? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Oh, boy. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We can do a thing? You ready for this, Drew? Yeah, why not? I got some fun sprinkled in on this one. I noticed there's paragraphs here, but mm -hmm. I'm going to choose to ignore yep. them. Are you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Get the crap out of my teeth. Okay. Here we go. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 81 of the Goulet Pencast, where fountain pens are still a thing. I am Brian Goulet. I am Drew Brown. And we are here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show, where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about ideal pens for riding on a horse all day, because we got a lot of experience with that. <laughs> We'll see. Um, we're sharing your pen enthusiasm with digital natives. If you know what that term is. People that like digital things and grew up around them. Uh, best pens for school. Thoughts on the new Tomoe River paper. Which Lamy special edition colors that we would choose next ourselves if we had the choice. And we're going to mess around with some AI generated fountain pen entertainment. Because that's all me. I went, to a work, I went to a work conference last week and we messed around with a bunch of AI stuff and I thought it would be fun to sprinkle some of that nonsense in here. So Yikes. I wrote some alternate, um, I said that weird, we, I wrote some alternate um, pencast intros and uh, so I thought I could read one and maybe you could read the other one. Oh Since God. I have to read it anyway, I still haven't memorized it after 81 episodes. So the first one, this was using chat GPT uh, and this is just verbatim from the the machines that are going to take us all over. Um, I wrote, um, write an introduction to the Goulet Pencast Fountain Pen YouTube show with Brian Goulet and Drew Brown in the style of Shakespeare. Okay. So I will do the Shakespearean one. All right. And then the next one I have, I thought I'd let you do because I did it in a Caribbean pirate style. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. You okay. down for that? You down yeah, for that? Yeah, yeah, we'll All right, so these that. are the alternates. Y'all let us know if you like these better. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to try and do somewhat of a British accent, but it's going to be terrible, but I'll try. Hark. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Got some phlegm in my throat. Starting off strong. All right. I'm not. Hark. Thy ears doth deceive thee. For lo and behold, the Goulet Pencast hath arrived. Join us, uh, jo joineth us on a journey most wondrous, a veritable odyssey through the land of pens, ink, and paper. Our two hosts, Brian Goulet and Drew Brown, are scholars of the highest order, well versed in the art of the fountain pen. As we venture forth into the depths of the pen world, they shall guide us with their knowledge, imparting unto us the secrets of nibs, inks, and all that lies between. So gather round, good people, and lendeth thine ears, for the Goulet Pencast shall provide thee with a most magnificent fountain pen experience. That wasn't that bad. Not bad, right? That's not bad. And honestly, I practiced that accent a little bit, and it was way worse. So this that's the best I've done it yet. So oh, there I'm, you go. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Look at that. Keep it going. You'll be an expert by the week, so by the but, weekend. But the next one, I said, write an introduction to the Gilly Pencast, blah, 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 in the style of a Caribbean pirate. And I thought it wrote it as me, but you, you can just read it as, right. as you want. I to. have not seen this before. This, he's coming in blind on this. Hurry there, me hearties. Welcome aboard the Goulet Pencast, the show that will shiver your timbers and make ye fall in love with fountain pens all over again. I be Brian Goulet, and this be my trusty first mate, Drew Brown. We be selling the seas of ink, exploring the depths of the pen world, and bringing ye the finest our fountain pen content ye ever did see. From nibs to ink, from cartridges to converters, we'll be showing ye the ropes and introducing ye to the treasures of the pen world. So hoist the Jolly Roger, sharpen ye quills, and get ready to set sail with the Goulet pen cast. <laughs> Not bad, right? Not bad. I think we can retire, Drew. Not I bad. Think, uh... <laughs> oh, just some fun nonsense for you. I'm all. getting paid right now. <laughs> this is fantastic. That's right. I'm... I cannot believe. So does that make me a professional voice actor now? Because I just um... got... I'm, sort I'm, of. I'm on the clock. Would you call? I just did a pirate accent <laughs> on the direct orders of the CEO. So I'm right. like, 
I'm, not, I'm putting that on my resume tonight. <laughs> Would you call what we're doing right now professional? I'm getting paid. I, all right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. That's the very definition. <laughs> I just got paid to do a pirate accent. But we're not getting paid by our viewers. Not directly anyway. Anyway. <laughs> That's all right. A check's, a check's <laughs> coming. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be fun, but uh, I'll have a little more sprinkled throughout. Um, but hang in there. You're more, the there's end. more of this? No, there's more AI oh, towards God. the end. I oh, may God. or may not have a, a dad joke that was generated by AI. It so can't we'll be any see. worse than yours. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Right. Okay. Uh, but anyway, let's kick off today's with some feedback. Woo. All right. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention, thank you, everybody. It's been a week, so you may not remember what mm. we talked about, but we talked about inks that Brian and I did not love at first, but mm. it mm -hmm. grew on us. Mm -hmm. And we asked to share yours with us, and you did. And we appreciated that. I loved yeah. reading all the comments and hearing about them. And I wanted to mention that uh, Pilot Orochizuku Yamabudo came mm. up several times. That's a sleeper. As, as a, well, it's one of the most popular in that line, mm -hmm. but I do think that people kind of know that it's popular and they give it a shot when they might not have wanted to and then they're pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I know I was for sure. Okay. Yeah. So that was a pretty common one. Um, <clears throat> and then we got a comment from Daxon Flux that says, Drew, like an old friend of mine, is just such a free spirit, like a unicorn with a rainbow sweater instead of a rainbow mane because rainbow sweaters are warm. <laughs> I don't really know. Rainbow cardigan maybe. What to think about that. Like, I love it. And I would love to be a rainbow in a, uh, a unicorn with a rainbow sweater. I think that's brilliant. Uh, do you consider me a free spirit, Brian? Um, Because I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm a stick in the mud. I don't know. Shannon always wants to go places and do things. And I'm like, Wah. so. I think in terms of like how most people see you, like in video form, you're definitely a free spirit. But I'm like spirit. not any different. Yeah, I guess I don't like. Yeah, you're, you're, your personality is free spirit, but you're, you're, yeah. you're kind of a homebody. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's the thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a personality free spirit. But, yeah. you know, yeah. still Definitely an introvert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like it. That's fine. I like it. You're you're a you're a complex individual. More complex than you might seem. Oh. You know. So I see. I, I I appear simple. Yeah. Is that what you say? I wouldn't say you're like a diamond. <laughs> you're like maybe a. I don't know. Some sort of zirconium in like the a, rough. Like a twelve sided die, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Um, and then uh, loves to read and plan. Well, this person's on the right channel. Um, mm. May I request a Corgi Beast sticker based on Drew's description? Oh. Today's pencast was fabulous. We, we called that immediately, didn't I we? Thought, like, dude, people are going to want a sticker. This, this is not the only one. <laughs> like, I put this in here because I want one, Is this too. a plant? Are you planting this so I'm that we planting. can develop it's it? Simply, it? It's simply, there was more than one of these. This was right. not the only person that said it. All right. I think All we right. might I need mean, to make this I, happen. We've made stickers before. I mean, we could we could make them again. All right. Well, so, you know, it's, it's, it's All right. out All there. Right. All right. All right. And then finally, um, Shisho5850 says, for the love of, oh, look at this, Brian. Oh, for the oh. love of Cthulhu's tentacled beard, please make a kaiju corgi sticker, please, with wow. praying emojis. Double, this person a is- double plant. I tell you, I didn't, I didn't even know how this got in Shocking. there. Shocking. Yeah. So funny how Amazing. you read and pick these. Amazing. Um, wow. Okay. okay. Did you put that in there? I didn't. Are you sure? No, funny enough. Oh, no. interesting. But, you know, I'm, I'm for it. I'm, I'm, I'm pro. <laughs> I'm pro fun. I'm pro You fun. know. Well, that's all I had. Of the two of us, I'm definitely more of the stick in the mud, non. I don't spirit. know. I don't know. I mean, I would say so. Like literally, stick in the mud. Like I'm in the mud. You a are lot. in the mud with I sticks. Stick my feet yes. in the mud a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, I got some feedback too. So this is in response to our discussion about animals that I might identify with. That's right, because I was talking about <laughs> you know we were trying to find you yeah, a good maquillage design. Thing. Yeah, Drew didn't approve of my maquillage design. It was so. fine. Yeah. Okay. It was fine. Yeah, free spirit, my butt. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Gwenny said, uh, Brian is so obviously a beaver, obsessed with wood, extremely hardworking, shares chores and parenting duties, generally all around great neighbor. Look at that. Everyone in the ecosystem wants a beaver around. I, I'm, I'm on board with that. Beavers are cool. And like the Corgi sticker request, this was not the only beaver comment. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I see another one right here. Fury Tigress. Uh, I think the animal that represents Brian the best is the beaver. Canadian heritage aside, it's the one animal that will chop wood and make stuff with it. I it, mean, it's, it's hard nature's for me to disagree. Woodworker. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty hairy. <laughs> well, I, I this this my, gave, my hair repels water pretty well. This this gave me a great idea. I was like, okay, how <laughs> awesome would a corgi kaiju sticker be alongside of a little woodworking beaver with cargo shorts? 
That's pretty good. Right? That's pretty good. I kind of want that on a water bottle like I, I now. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. <laughs> I have a little that. log under one arm, a little axe under one arm with some like, you know, khaki cargo shorts. <laughs> it's the Brian yeah. Beaver. Beaver's kind of like squatty and waddly though. Yeah, you it'd know? be kind of hard know. to put shorts on him. I mean, it could be, it could they, happen. They just look like pants. We're, we'll just pull up mid journey and we'll make, we'll yep. make it happen. <laughs> right. Beaver with cargo shorts. I love it. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, the thing, the only thing that throws me off about the beaver, this is total nonsense, but like, you know how we did like the disc profile thing? Yeah. How it's got like the different animals associated mm -hmm. with each like personality type. Mm -hmm. The beaver is the one that's like, loves details, is very timely, very like rules oriented. And well, I am like, that is my, like one of my lower traits. But not, but when you're out doing your hobby, you are very meticulous and yeah. very detail oriented, very careful, yeah, very somewhat, cautious. Somewhat. I'm cautious when like, Safety is involved. You know, safety, when but my you, own you personal are, You do not involved. operate haphazardly at all. No, I wouldn't I think, say so. I think that with a personality thing, mm -hmm. like how you're, you know, that, 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 that high, um, you know, uh, dominant, uh, the D thing uh, yeah, for that profile. Yeah. Um, that might just be kind of in your own like personal passion life or, you know, uh, entrepreneurial, mm. you know, hustle. Yeah. Um, but maybe in your hobby, you kind of, you know, you might be more beaver like. I don't know. If you see. You, you don't cut corners. You don't blaze trail with, you know, leaving the path of destruction in your wake when you're out there, you know. I don't know. You've never seen me operate out there. I, I definitely, I'm like, let's just. Let's let's make this happen. Let's oh, go. Okay. I'm about a tally tally ho tally. Oh, fourth. okay. Well, you do it yeah. safely at least. I do. I try. Uh, anyway, yeah. Good entertainment, everybody. Thank you. Um, so this is in response to my short-lived attempt at an engineering degree, my one class that I attended, uh, that I talked about last pencast. Uh, Hayden Windmiller said, "Brian, I'm graduating engineering school May of this year. Good on you." Glad to hear you understand my pain. There is an engineer in my office who has graduated 25 years ago. He came into work and said that he woke up in the middle of the night from a finals nightmare, even 25 years after leaving school. Oh my God. That's horrifying. That's only, I don't, I don't remember a lot of my dreams. Like Rachel remembers like five dreams a night. Yeah. It's insane. I literally can't remember any of my dreams, but the only semi-recurring dream I've ever had has me waking up after like just being in school, not like forgetting something, mm. having a test, whatever, just literally being back in school. That's called a nightmare. <laughs> just that environment. That's not a dream, just, that's like, a nightmare. Cause like I was just never prepared for anything in school. I just couldn't get it together. Mm. Like just, you know, but Awful. anyway. Uh, so yeah, that resonates with me. Wow. Well, good on you for graduating. Seriously. Um, and then last one is from Robin Allen. Hello, Brian Drew. So much good stuff in this episode. I'm glad to hear about all the precautions Brian takes in the woods. My father was a great woodman and woodworker. I was a medical professional. I can't tell you the number of calls I got from him asking for advice about his chainsaw hitting a knot and bouncing onto his leg, boards kicking off a saw and impaling nearby trees, or kicking him off as he was topping a tree. Stay safe. Wow. It is dangerous work. And you have to do what you can to mitigate that. Does that happen when you hit a knot in a tree? It like messes with your chainsaw? I mean, it can. I mean, you're dealing, that's a tough thing about doing anything in the woods or with trees or whatever. Like trees are living organisms and they have a lot of variables. Like some trees, especially like I try to be careful when I'm taking on trees that are semi-rotten or like, mm -hmm. you know, because you can never tell what's happening inside a tree. Right. So when you go to cut it down, you don't really know the structural integrity of what's happening in there. Or if there's something embedded in it and you hit it, you know, you just gotta, yeah, you gotta be ready weird for- stuff embedded in trees before. There's like whole chunks of metal or like- Yeah, yeah. You know, wire that, you know, used to be attached to like a telephone pole or something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. especially if like, you know, somebody had barbed wire fence or something and then yeah. it ran through a tree. Like the, literally the tree can grow around it. Yeah. And then you have like wire embedded in the tree. Like there's crazy stuff that can happen. Mm. But, I try to be safe and I hope your dad's okay, uh, Robin. But uh, that's what we got for feedback this week. So we're gonna generate some new nonsense that's gonna create more feedback. But before we do, we're gonna start out talking about some new stuff. Some new things to talk about this week. Uh, full disclosure, I was on a work trip last week. So I'm a little bit out of the loop, so I'll talk about it, but I don't have a lot of insights per se. Yeah, I was out last week as well, so yeah. bear with us. Yes. Um, so uh, we had the Urban Straight Glass Dip Pens. Yeah, which is kind of like a return. Yeah, we've had 
straight glass dip pens. The design's maybe slightly different, mm -hmm. but I mean, we've had glass dip pens going back to 2010. Like it's yeah. one of the OG products. And these, products these are the carried. shorter ones, you know, mm -hmm. we had carried them. So they're- Yeah, 24 bucks a piece, which is very reasonable. What I love about the glass dip pens, like it's obviously not the same writing experience as a fountain pen, but for ink testing, ink mm -hmm. sampling, that yeah. kind of a thing. I mean, literally you can just keep a cup of water nearby. You can write with samples and you get a pretty darn close, you know, uh, writing, result of what you would get in a fountain pen. Yeah, same like basic line width. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. between an they're, extra fine and a broad. Now glass dip pens, they're all handmade. So there's no like supreme consistency no. between like the writing like width and tip and stuff like no, that. And sometimes they can even vary as you twist the pen around. Yeah, because they like have these flutes in them and they, they kind of like stretch it out and twist it and break it off and all that kind of stuff. So your writing experience will vary from pen to pen, but you know, you get one pen and then you kind of get the hang of it. Um, and you can, you know, more or less emulate, you know, depending on how high up you hold it and which flute, you know, you have. And so you can kind of play around with it a little bit and get some different like writing line widths and stuff. But for 24 bucks, literally you can dip the thing and then you just dip it in water and this stuff washes right off or keep a wet paper towel or napkin or something by, wipe it off and then you can go again. So for like rapid ink sampling, nothing is better. Yeah, it's great. So those are fun and they come in four different colors. So you can check those out. We got those in stock. Um, we have the new Platinum Preppy Modern Maquillet, the Preppy Wa Modern Maquillet yeah. limited editions. So it's basically a Platinum Preppy with some printed designs on them. Yeah, Maquillet. Maquillet is uh, the loosest the term for it. Yes. These are not hand painted Maquillet. These no. are some probably some kind of Machine, in, machine in the, applied, in the you know, spirit thing. of the <laughs> inspired by the design of Machia. Sure. I would say. But they're 10 bucks a piece. And, you know, it's a preppy, which is a super reliable, very popular yeah. pen. Um, six different colors with different patterns and stuff. So um, those are pretty cool. So I would say if you're interested in those, we're not going to have them forever because they are a limited deal. Um, and yeah, you can check them out. It's only a couple bucks more than a regular preppy. So if you're interested, go check it out. And last one I got is the Endless Five Pen Companion Pouch in brown and we got to see these uh firsthand a little early and they had we that did. adjustable strap that was pretty unique it is kind of interesting you know products like this are like hard to quantify because there's nothing else really like it no it's unique to see a pen case that actually does something different yeah um so yeah. Th this one if you remember it has you know several loops but all of the loops are connected it's all one continuous piece of elastic yeah that then you can pull to um you know allow pens of multiple sizes to have a nice tight, uh, you know, bounding, uh, binding, like yeah. be bound tightly. I don't know. Yeah. And it's, I think it's good for if you have like, cause you can hold what five pens mm -hmm. and it's got a little spot for a cartridge in there too, or a spare converter or something and like notebook. that. And you can fit your notebook in there. So I think it's great. It's got the, you know, uh, zipper closure. So you don't have to worry about anything falling out. It's great to just like toss around in your bag. Um, but what I like about the, the five pen thing is you can have pens of like massively varying sizes yeah. and because you kind of cinch them up a little bit, you can accommodate. And the those. massive pen does, you don't need to worry about the elastic grabbing it too tightly. Cause right. I know some people that have very expensive pens, they're a little more apprehensive toward tight fitting elastic mm -hmm. pen cases. Yeah. And this one, it can be as loose or as tight as you'd like. Yeah. It's neat. It's something different. So uh, those we have for $50. We've got it in brown. I think they have other colors, but we're starting out with brown maybe. Is I that think right? so. Yeah. So anyway, let us know what you think. Go check it out. Um, yeah. Uh, and that's all I got. What there about you, go. Drew? Got some good stuff. Uh, we got a new Bennu exclusive pen launched Ooh. in the week that we were out. Yeah. Just without our permission, they decided to just launch the They're sangria. Like, we don't need these guys. Come on now. They're, no, the uh, we're done with them. The Bennu Euphoria in Sangria, continuing our refreshment yeah. collection that um, you know we were recently talking about when we talked about you know pen sales that surprised us. I mentioned mm -hmm. the ice caramel latte being a surprise. Yeah. This is in that same series, so we've mm -hmm. got a tasty drink, the sangria. Allegedly, it's tasty. I've never had one, but um, it's lovely. You've never it's, had sangria. I've only tried alcohol one time. One time ever. Nineteen ninety nine. My mom let me have a little bit of champagne. Okay. And it was grape juice that burned my nose. And I just was like, why would people do this? That's, yeah, that's not. I was like, no, thank you. That's not unlike what most alcohol uh, does. Give me, yeah. give, me the, give me the Welch's. Yeah, I'm with you. And then. Uh, you some Martinelli's is what you need. And then Y2K happened and uh, none of it mattered because the world <laughs> melted, right? That's, that's right. how it went. That's right. <laughs> um, so Sangria is out. Check it out. And uh, there might be more in the refreshment collection one day. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Just buy a lot of these and it'll happen. Mm. Um. And then Ferris Wheel Press came out with an ink while we were gone called Cloak and Forest. Mm. 
And I haven't uh, written with this one recently. I think I might have done the writing samples with it, but I kind of forgot about it. So They've been coming out with a lot of ink. They have. It's Thank kinda, you. It's sometimes hard to It is a tell. lot. And you, you know me from the test we did a couple weeks ago. I can't tell the difference between real inks and ones that you just make <laughs> up the name. So We need to do that again. Cloak and Forest? Marvelous. I'm like, yeah, that was good. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> it's out, though. It's uh, it's 21 bucks. It's 20 milliliters. You can go get it if you want to. And then one thing I am excited about, and I do recall, are the Visconti Opera Gold fountain pens. So this is a very interesting set. If you remember, we spoke about the Visconti Mirage Mythos pens, where Visconti had chosen to do a steel nib fountain pen, but using a Schmidt German steel nib rather than an in-house Visconti nib. And uh, no offense to Visconti, but that nib performed so good. The German steel nib was such a, you know, uh, improvement, in my opinion, on the performance of the steel nib pens. I love that I couldn't say enough good things about it. That nib is also going to be on these Visconti Opera Golds. So at $348, they are a considerable jump up from the Mythos Mirage. They However, are. you are getting an ink window. You are getting the hook safe lock that is traditionally yes. found on the Homo sapiens. Love it. And you are getting the double reservoir power filler, also usually found in Homo sapiens with and a, above. With a chonky like rod. The rod on is that thing. huge. They made the rod thicker. It's, it's like very twice essential. as large in diameter. Yeah. So you're getting so but it's about a um uh it's about a hundred dollars from the mythos. So yeah. If you feel like the ink window, the hook safe lock closure, and the double reservoir power filler is worth $100, then this pen will be perfect for you. The resins are beautiful. And I'll also say that along with the hook safe lock comes a spring loaded inner cap. So it's not just a fun way to close and open your pen. It actually is. Seals it well. Yeah. It yeah. is. There's a practical benefit to it as well. Yeah. So I'm really excited about this. I love mm -hmm. the direction Visconti has been going recently with these more affordably priced pens. This feels to me like, yes, it's $348. It's not chump change, but. <clears throat> you can pay under $500 and get something that actually feels like a really nice luxury item. So I'm yeah. super into that. Well, especially because we've had opera, I mean, the opera model they've had for a while, mm -hmm. but it's always had a gold nib and it's always been more in like the 800 to $1,000 range. Yeah. So this is like, you know, kind of a bargain compared to that. I'm so really excited I, about this I, pen. I like what they've done. I think in the past they've tried to come out with more affordable pens, but they've just They've, miss the mark. I mean, you have to. You have to. You have take, to make compromises. You have to make compromises. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes, you know, companies that are used to making more expensive pens, when they make less expensive pens, they they compromise on the wrong things. Yeah. And I feel like they've done that in the past with some of the other models they've done, but mm -hmm. I feel like this one and the Mythos, they've cut away some of the right things. Yes. And like distilled it down to like the elements. You that still feel like you're holding a Visconti. Yeah. It's in, cool. in in all the best ways. It's so, cool. It's and cool. that and there's something about that satin gold trim too that is pretty yeah. unique. You they're don't kind see of that make, a lot of they're pens. kind of making that their signature thing for this style of pen that they're bringing into yeah. 2023. So I'm really curious what y'all's feedback is on these pens and then obviously, you know, once people who buy them get them in their hands, um, what the feedback is as well. Because, you know, sometimes we see these things and it's like, well, we think they're going to do really well, but it's like, you don't really know until it gets out there in the world. Right. So please let us know. We'll find out soon enough. All right. So that's, that's it for new stuff. It, yeah. We got a lot more stuff on the horizon for sure. I mean, the dry spell that we had earlier this year is no longer. Gone. Yep. So we are going to be talking about a lot of things, but that's it for, for today. Um, but now we got some Q&A. And, oh, we got some fun ones. We do. This first one's a banger, so get ready. All right, let's do it. All right, Brian, starting this one off. I'm ready. Excitedly. You, you put a long question in here, well, so I, I wanted, was like, I, I wanted need to a read, long answer. I had to read this whole thing because <laughs> okay. um, this this fellow uh, reached out to our customer care department this week, just yesterday, I believe. Oh, all right. So and I knew, timely. I knew instantly that I'm, I wanted to get... Um, you don't want to sit on this for like three or five years? No, no. I want to say it now. And cool. I, I honestly love his writing too. So I'm going to read the whole thing. All right. Okay. So this is from a gentleman named Merrill. Mm -hmm. I'm seeking your professional opinion. I run a ranch in East Texas and consequently spend 12 or more hours a day on horseback. I find it behooves me to write frequently during the day. Notes behooves. for staff. Ah, behooves. <laughs> nice. Horse joke. Yep. Um, notes on stock, work orders, etc. <laughs> Most of my writing is accomplished from the saddle. I don't dismount my horse unless absolutely necessary. I keep a Lamy 2000 in my shirt pocket along with a pocket mm. notebook, and I keep an A5 notebook and a backup pen in my saddlebags. Wow. What pens would you recommend for this time for this kind of lifestyle? I've had a few. Uh, I've had quite a, quite a few pens over the years that have failed 
and have had to retire to desk duty. Usually by the pen, usually the pens fail by leaking, I presume because of the jostling, which naturally comes while working on a horse, or they just crack or physically transform themselves into more pieces than the designer intended. <laughs> Generally, this like is a result that. of a horse wreck or getting kicked or run over completely by an overly enthusiastic bovine. <laughs> To sum up, I would appreciate your professional opinion on a pen that will stand up to a bit of cowboy in on a regular basis. Thank you for your time. Wow. I love that. It's so good. So much. I like horse wreck. I just think of a horse wreck. There, like there, a car there, wreck, there, there, a was, wreck. there was a subsequent email from this gentleman that mm -hmm. like I actually jumped in while Jessica was responding to him and I said, Sir, this is the best <laughs> email I have ever read <laughs> in my time here. That's it was like cool. it was like poetry. I wanted like he was talking about like just the environment and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, I wanna like I'm gonna get some popcorn and read it all over again. It's like Red Dead Redemption, right? You're oh, just man. like <laughs> I just thought no, he just he was he's very good with his words and he paints a yeah, picture. So absolutely. But yeah, let's talk to Merrill. What do you think? A cowboy, uh, uh cowboy pen. I, I will be honest with you. I I've never been asked this specific right? question. This, this is, is a new one. I for love me. it. I knew as soon. I'm like, this is what we need to talk about. This. <clears throat> I would say that you know these types of conditions would certainly stress test uh, any pen in, in real life. You got all kinds of factors here. You got, you know, jostling. You have which is the best word for it? Potential, yeah, potential. Fact. You know, catastrophic damage. You know, a horse throwing the pen, throwing it off, or stepping on the pen, or you know, who knows what. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would definitely think durability would have to be an absolute key factor. Um, so I'm thinking some kind of like rugged plastic or like a really sturdy metal. Um, I'm thinking plastic just because, you know, an element of maybe disposability. Cause like I could think of situations where like it would like get l thrown on the ground and covered in dirt and you lose it or whatever, who knows yeah. what you're riding and it flings off and you can't find it, you know? So you don't want like the most expensive pen in the world, you know, but you want something good, yeah. something sturdy. So, um, you know, there was a couple of people that I remember talking to in the past who were either like military personnel, like active duty military in the desert. Like I could think that would be an equally testing environment. Um, another one I'm thinking of specifically is somebody who I know who is a border patrol agent in uh, California and they had to ride an ATV all day. Oh, there you go. And so they had, you know, kind of a uniform type thing and they were, you know, similar Obviously, it's not a live animal with those variables, but Still, you know, you're, you're riding. You're, you're dealing with rough terrain, riding something, and dealing in rough terrain, yeah. kind of desert environment all day. Um, so I have these these people are who I'm thinking of in, in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm thinking, like in terms of the pen, I've got some specific ones I'll get to, but um, I'm thinking like maybe cartridge pens, like cartridge converter pens, yeah, keep something it without a huge ink capacity, because yeah. I think the higher the ink capacity especially when the ink level gets low and you got a lot of air mm -hmm. in the ink chamber, you have more susceptibility to, you know, instability of the, the air ink interchange that happens there. You can have more burping, more, you know, uh, spillage of the ink into the cap. I find that that tends to happen less with cartridge pens or just like, uh, you know, pens with a slightly lower um, ink capacity. Uh, but specifically with cartridge pens, what's nice is you can keep the cartridges themselves, they're, they're pretty durable. They're obviously disposable and stuff like that. So you don't necessarily have to like clean the pen and like, like if you if you're if your pen's running out of ink and you're trying to refill it, you can pop a new cartridge in while you're up on a horse. You need to find. You need you're to not going like to bust little, out an ink well. You need to have like a little horsey <laughs> trash can that would get rid of the old one. I mean, he's got saddlebags. I'm yeah. sure he's you know. Sounds ink. like he's he sounds like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, well, he definitely like, does. So for sure. Um, but I'm thinking like you know the convenience of a cartridge could could really be beneficial in this type of environment. Yeah. Um, you know, not to say you couldn't have, you know, a pen filler or a I mean, traveling ink well or something like that. Yeah. I mean you yeah, for so yeah, you're you're right now you're not using a cartridge, you're filling it somehow. Yeah. So if you don't have an ink well, a Panider ink well or a, a Visconti traveling ink well, you know, get one because that will help your pen filling for sure. Yeah. Um so probably one of the most recommended pens that I hear from people who work in like very active environments like this is the Lamy Safari. Yeah. It's very hardy. It's not too expensive. It's just a workhorse, reliable rider. It's got a big fat clip that fits on pretty much any uniform or any whatever thick clothing that you're probably wearing. Um, you know, the, um, the, the charcoal version or any matte version of it, a lot less likely to like slip out of your hand. The triangle grip is easy to like scratch hold. resilient too. Scratch resilient. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that is like an easy recommend. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, Lamy All Star too would also work. That one you can get, you can ding it up a little bit more if you're dropping it on like rocks and stuff like that. I think the Safari would take abuse without showing it quite as much, maybe as an All Star, but they're they're essentially similar patents. Yeah. So I could All Star, you, you definitely see the wear and tear on an All Star. You can, but you know, if you're in that environment too, you're probably you know. You're probably I, I okay it, with a little more great. I love seeing look. I love seeing beat up all stars. I think they look yeah, cool. Yeah, it just means they've they've lived life. Mm-hmm. You know, they've they've experienced things. Um, so I think that is an easy recommend too. And I could also see some benefit for having like either of these pens. Honestly, if you go with like a really bright color that sticks out in the environment. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, because I'm thinking like if I'm working outside, like a lot of times I like like for example when I'm cutting trees down, mm-hmm. you know, you have these little throw bags for when I need to like throw a line up into a tree. Mm-hmm. Well, the throw bags are all like super bright pink and purple and all these like really bright, crazy yeah. colors. Because when you're working in the woods, you don't want something that's green or black or brown because if you drop it, you'll never find it. So I actually kind of like, it depends on your environment. You like know, a red and, safari or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Or going with like, uh, you know, one of the, uh, like the matte, like the the, the um, terra orange or something like yeah. that, you know? So it's whatever, just you know your environment. Go with a color that sticks out. It might be a little easier in case you happen to drop the pen. So that's a factor. Um, I think the Lamy 2000 actually is not a bad choice. No, that's a good choice. You know, uh, that's very durable He's pen. on the right track. Yeah. If you drop the pen or something happens to it while it's open and something happens to the nib, that's a little more questionable. You know, the thing I like about the Safaris and All-Stars is you can get spare nibs. You can replace those. You know, they're, they're more swappable. And just the pen as a whole is cheaper. So... You know, you can buy what, like five, six safaris for the price of a 2000. So it's not going to be as good of a writing experience, in my opinion. Lamy well, 2000, I really love. Um, so, I mean, you could definitely keep using that 2000, and that would be awesome. Um, I think another good one is the Traveler's Pen. You know, I've I've done quite a bit of work Such with as that one. What? I may or may not have taken down a carport <gasps> with that pen in my pocket. You don't say. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's a good one. Super durable. I mean, and it's very small, very compact. Yeah. Um, and the clip is really strong too. And and it fits like really thick material as well. Oh, yeah. And it's a cartridge, you know, standard international yeah, that's a, cartridge. Yeah, that's a strong clip for being as thin as it is. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's really thin. So it's like it can go because sometimes you get like certain like workwear or stuff where you have pockets, but like they're made for pencils. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you have a fountain that's too thick, it won't like fit in those right. little like pencil pockets. But I find thinner pens like the the Traveler's pen will fit in like anything that's made for a pencil. Solid. So that's a good one. Um, Kuwaiko pens maybe, you know, Kuwaiko has got a lot of like smaller, shorter pens. They don't have the as good of a clip situation. Yeah. So I don't love that. But for just like a bang around cheap pen, yeah. and if you that's lose kind of it, you're small not and compact, devastated. yeah, you lose it. You're not yeah. gonna sweat it. So I'm not as like firm on that one. Um, I think Pilot Metropolitan too. It's just a solid pen. The fact that those are metal mm-hmm. is really good. Um, the uh, Kakuno as well for that matter. The Kakuno, like, yeah, very resilient. Same yeah, nib. yeah, absolutely. So bright those, colors. Those could work, and yeah, and those can take cartridges or converters. So mm-hmm. you got options there. Um, and then uh, maybe even a Twisby Eco, you know, because if you do want a higher ink capacity and you don't have to like refill it quite as much, the Eco is just such a friggin' reliable pen. Yeah. Like it would work. Um, and then you can see your ink level and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't know if yeah. you happen to be like wearing gloves or whatever, it's just a little less to fiddle with. Um, and then Pilot Varsity, it's basically already disposable. You don't have to worry about filling it or anything. I was just thinking, having a stock of varsity. When you mentioned a backup pen in the saddlebags, I was thinking varsity, varsity would be a great yeah. backup. Varsity pen. would be a great backup pen. Yeah, yeah, and especially because the way that those fill, the feed on those is more like a wick feed, kind of like the Yookers, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's not, you know, you're not going to get the same like ink in the cap kind of a thing because it just doesn't draw the ink That's the a good same point. way. Yeah. Mm. So you don't have to worry about that same like sloshing out. Like even though it's got more ink capacity because it's essentially an eyedropper fill, um, but because of that wick feed, it's it's only going to let so much it's ink It's really through. regulated. It is. So I think that one uh, could work pretty well. Nice. So yeah, those are some of my recommendations. Solid. Yeah. Uh, you know what Jessica recommended? What's that? Well, in true Jessica form, she recommended an Opus 88 demonstrator. <laughs> like that was her pick when we okay. did that video on like our team members' favorite pens. Yeah. That was just Jessica loves the Opus she 88. She loves that pen. But that's yeah. actually a really good it's recommendation. A because, hearty pen. Because it's got that shutoff valve. Oh, that's true. Like Opus 8, like some, it's like mm-hmm. the Japanese eyedropper style shutoff valve. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we just mentioned that's what Visconti implores. You'll see the yeah. same shutoff valve on m- most, if not all, vacuum filling pens like the 823, yeah. the VAC 700. You got so, that on the Namiki Emperor, so you yeah. could carry one of those too. Might there be you a go. Good choice, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> but Jessica recommended that for the shutoff valve so that you don't mm. get as much ink spritz into the That's cap. That's a good idea. Because you can yeah. shut it off. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty um, solid idea. So um, I, I do believe mm -hmm. he, he purchased one of those. So I hope he's happy with All that right. one. All right, cool. Um, but um, I did want to uh, go ahead and um, share a bit of feedback from Merrill because I uh, he sent the customer care department a picture of himself on his ranch okay. on the horse oh, that's and I'm awesome. like I want to put this in the pen cast because this is glorious so yeah. I was like hey can you ask him if that's okay and uh, this was his response um good morning Miss Jessica I trust you had a wonderful weekend I pulled a big uh, I pulled a great bull this weekend that tried to put me in the rafters and got a check on the saddle bronc named Moonwalker was a little sore when the sun came up this morning but it feels like being alive and I could not imagine anything more perfect I would be honored for you to use or share any of my pictures I've sent you in any way you deem appropriate I have enjoyed Mr. Drew's work on YouTube for quite some time in uh, for quite some years Mr. Drew and Mr. Brian are often my companions on the stormy days when I'm confined to the office catching up on the obligatory paperwork <laughs> that is required to run a business. I have one monitor on my desk that just runs Goulet content in continuum. If there's anything I can do for you, please do not hesitate to let me know. P.S. Turkey Hammock. That's awesome. My man. I love how like you have like, a bit of cowboy accent that's coming out as you're reading it. You, like, can't, you, can't, not, you can't help you it. You can't not. He's a poet, man. I tell you, I love it so that's much. That's fantastic. So that it. made my day. Like I, I tell I you, so, some, sometimes you, you get a person that you just like can't imagine like how in the world am I connecting with this human being well, like through it, fountain pens. It's just magical. Well, this is what's so great too, like about the fountain pen community yeah. in general. Like I literally just got back from a work like networking conference thing where people are selling all kinds of random stuff. Like it's an e-commerce focused thing. There's people that sell like clown makeup and like female wipes and all kinds of things with all different like markets and, and, and communities and stuff like that that they serve. And so I've, I'm very well versed of just like explaining like, yeah, fountain pens, they still exist. And, you know, it's a thing. And, you know, just getting to talk about what we do. And, and people always ask like, what kind of person is using fountain pens? <laughs> And, and it's these examples like this. I'm like, it's literally everywhere from like cowboys to teachers, students, veterans, you know, office workers, like you name it. Anybody can use fountain pens as long as they're into it. It blows so. my mind. Like I, you, you'll see the picture that I put on there. There's no chance that you, that anybody could have been like, do you think that guy knows about the pen cast? You'd be like, no. <laughs> you like, that guy? That guy? No. Like cowboy? He's busy. <laughs> he's got other things to he's, do. <laughs> yeah. He's clearly got more important things <laughs> got, in his life to tend to. Oh, but then, you know, if I, if I saw that guy turn and say turkey hammock to me, I'd be like. You'd be like, he's one of them. What? He's How? In the know. I love it. Why? I like, love it. Blows my mind. Every if you ever time. get a chance to go to a pen show too? It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's like an eclectic group of people. Yeah, I had, I had, I had a couple. Like, I was at the Baltimore show this past weekend and had a couple of random turkey hammock. Oh, what? Hey, <laughs> that's you know? awesome. That's so great. It's amazing. That's so great. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, very cool, Meryl. I'm inspired by that, and I love the what is the phrase that he used? Um, uh, woke up and felt like I lived, or like a, I, I. What did he say? It's so good because um, I definitely feel like that sometimes. Oh, he said, you know, um, got a check on a saddle bronc named Moonwalker. Was a little sore when the sun came up this morning, but it feels like being alive, and I could not imagine anything more perfect. It feels like being alive. I, I mean, love it. I yeah. love it. Good stuff. I feel like Meryl needs a pen, like a podcast or something. <laughs> I could just listen to that all day uh, if long. If he talks like he writes, he absolutely does. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. All right. I got a question for you, Drew. Bring it on. This is from Texacata. How can I share the love of pens with people who are almost only digital? How do, how do you how do you expose them to it if they if they don't even know they don't have a basis of knowledge? Well, let me first start out by saying I, I understand the desire because I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this in the video that we're publishing this week. Actually, it's like the first thing I said. I'm one of those people who, when I'm super jazzed about something, I I just want to share it. I want to be like, oh, did you hear about this like AI that like oh my god, it's so oh, yeah. cool. It's like. And you do the same thing. Like, I'm extent. watching this show right now. Right. And be like, that show was like right. aired three years so ago. Be I, like, but I'm into it now. I really <laughs> want to share my excitement. I get really yeah. into things. I just have a lot of passion. I don't halfway dive into anything. Really? Do you? I know, right? Yeah. Um, but but I've also learned that it should not ever be a requirement for my own enjoyment mm -hmm. to have other people be into it. If you if you feel like you'd like to share it that's great but don't ever think that you can't that, that it somehow puts a limit on how much you can love something you know or enjoy a hobby mm. just because you might feel a little alone in it now granted you're never alone there's always a community oh, yeah. always but you don't need to share the love you really don't you don't have to if you do 
do it with the right people because I've given how many pens have I had given away over the years? I don't even mm -hmm. know. I, none of them became regular purchasers of fountain pens. None of them. Not one. I might get lucky if one still uses it every now and then. I'm like, oh yeah, it dried up. Can I? Where do you get more ink? Like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So it's you it's can't fine. Force, you can't force no, it. No, but but you know, if you do know somebody who has other hobbies who might be into collecting vintage cameras or somebody that's just super into vinyl records, maybe that person might be the type of you know character that it has a predisposition to the interest that you and I share. Mm. So be selective in it. You don't need to make everybody get into it because that's just not going to happen. But every now and then, just use your pen in public. You know, talk about it when you feel like it. And eventually, you're going to talk to the right person about it and be like, oh, yeah, I have been interested in trying one of those. I got to follow a couple of Instagram accounts. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. pretty curious. Like, well, what's the deal? Is it hard? You'll, you'll connect with the right person eventually. Yeah. I haven't yet, but... I don't need to because you're all just right there. So, well, you're also an introvert and you don't go out very much uh, outside of yeah. pen shows. And and I tell you, I was on the <laughs> I was on the the plane um, last week and someone asked me what I did and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> really? it's so it's, exhausting. It's a lot to explain. I, I don't need to tell you. You probably did it like 20 times last week. That's all I did last yeah. week. Yeah, it's tiring, isn't it? Well, you probably you have it you down to a script. You practice yeah, it. A lot. I don't. I'm like, yeah. don't ask me what I do. Don't ask me what I do. Oh my god, I'm an insurance, but. <laughs> No, yeah, you'll um, get no follow up questions there. No, but uh, that's true. <laughs> I sell Amway. Oh, really? Tell me. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> that'll end the conversation right there. <laughs> that's a good idea. Um, so, yeah, and I would say that uh, remind you that there certainly is a community. If you don't want to spread the love, you can at least connect with people that already have that love. Uh, pen shows are a great example. There's a big pen show on in the central U.S. and both coasts, and there's plenty in other parts of the world as well. And then there's also Goulet Nation, which we don't talk about hardly ever here on the PenCast, but we do have a Facebook group, a very mm -hmm. large Facebook group called Goulet Nation. Mm -hmm. If you do it's want a to private Facebook group, yeah, so. but you can find it. You can you can, you know, request yeah. a little. It's a very active group. Yeah, it's a very active group. A lot of people there. Yeah, happy to always chat with you. Very friendly people as well. So um, I would uh, recommend checking that out as well. And um, and then uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, um, just a reminder to. Um, be okay with it being just your thing. It's okay if it just happens to be your little personal hobby. And fountain pens, I think at their core, are a very you know, personal experience. You get to pick your pen with your nib that fits your hand. You get to choose your color, writing on paper that you chose. The whole thing is indicative of your choices and your selection and finding that perfect combination that makes you really enjoy the writing experience in a way that is just not enjoyed um, you know, under conventional and modern means. So it's a very personal relationship with you and your writing utensil. So I say just like go all in on that. Enjoy that personal connection and share it when the opportunities arrive. But don't feel like you need to, you know, go forth and, you know, evangelize the fountain pen hobby. You know, it's all right. They'll 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 find you. They'll find us. Um, and if you want to find them, Goulet Nation. Uh, you, the YouTube comments seriously are great too. Like every time anybody has ever asked a question in the YouTube comments here, there's always, you know, oh, yeah. friends that are ready to, For you know, sure. pick up your question and help you out. So <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah. I've had a little more success getting some people into pens in yeah. my life. Yeah. I mean, not just obviously this entire business, but honestly, like this whole business was not like, let's convince everybody to use fountain pens. It was like, let's give all the people that are like naturally interested and inclined to yeah. have a home, have a place. That's it. And then let it spread as it may. Um, but, you know, what I've learned too, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a very good salesperson, like in general, like the traditional sales sense. Like I had some like retail sales jobs early in my career. I'm a, actually a bit shy, especially like when I was younger, I was very shy Me too. and really did not like selling no. things, which I still don't really. No. Now I just view this as like, we're educating, we're talking, we're just enjoying, you know, sharing what we know with yeah. people who are interested, you know, and probably we could grow and have like more followers, more, you know, whatever, grow even more if we were like, more sell, like sell, sales sell, sell, yeah. forward, maybe, but but that's just not, that's not in our DNA. No, I, I remember, I, I told you this a while ago, I don't know if you remember, but I my second job was Wilson's Leather in the mall. That's right. And the day they told me to go stand outside the store and like, 
get people to come in and like, you know, bug them as they're walking. I, I put in my two weeks. And I could see them wanting to do that because you're so personable <laughs> and like you're at the outwardly, your personality God. would be inclined. Like, yeah, yo, this guy will talk to anybody. Let's was, put him out there. I was like, where I'm like, I'd like to put in my two weeks. Like I, wow. I hate it when people do that to me. Yeah. If I'm just walking from point A to point B, leave me alone. If I want to come into yeah. your leather store, I will walk through your doors. Yeah, that is a bit weird. Come Le on. Leather's not exactly like an impulse buy. No. Like, let me buy this $500 like, you're, you're, like leather I, jacket. I did not. <laughs> no, I'm not going to harass people. Oh, God, I hated that. Yeah. And then, you know, we worked at Circuit City for a long time, too. And, man, all these warranties they made you sell. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That. Yeah. I worked at Radio Shack. Yeah. And yeah. So we were, you and I were. Did you have to do I warranties? I guess in competition. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Printer warranties, printer oh, protection yeah. plans. Oh, all my God. All that stuff, man. Ugh. I was selling, like, satellite TVs. They were trying to, and they were trying to get us stuff. to do protection plans on DVDs at one point. I'm like, DVDs, come on. Like, the disc. Yeah. Wow. So stupid. Yeah. I love if if someone came out to me and be like, "Hey, you know, I'm looking for a, you know, a good video game for my son." I'm like, "Oh boy, let's go." Like I did yeah, I yeah. love that. I just don't like bothering people. Yeah. I hate bothering people. Well, so yeah, I mean, I think I think in most sales environments, you know, it is like like techniques and tricks and yeah. stuff like that, but I think the mo the purest form of it should literally just be you're helping people. Yeah. You're educating. And if you want to buy something, here it is. You're genuinely helping to find the best thing to solve the problem that they're having. Yeah. Which sometimes not everybody knows the problem, the full extent of the problem they're having. So there is like an element of asking questions and getting into it a little bit. But certainly. Anyway. Yeah. All cool. right. Moving yeah, on so, to question. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I was going to share a little bit of my experience here with oh, the, only, sorry, sorry. the only digital thing. No, I, didn't, I actually don't even really have any notes. Um, I mean, I resonate with what you're saying, but I think, you know, uh, especially just coming off of last week, we're literally just talking to like hundreds of people who, you know, don't have any knowledge of pens. But in that type of environment, they know that I'm like at least a certain caliber of business person right. in doing this. So there's like... I don't know when I'm like going through TSA and telling them like, yeah, I sell fountain pens. They're like, what is it? Like, what yeah. is this guy? Like, what a random thing to do. They but the no conference, idea, but they're like, like, all right, well, you, you the conference, they're like, oh, like you're not failing in order this. to be at this thing. Right. You have to be at least a certain level of, right. you know, a viable business. So there's like, I already have a little bit of a foot in the door there, mm -hmm. at least in like a casual conversation. But even still, there's always a difference between the people that are talking like, oh, that's interesting. And you can tell that like they want to talk about like, the operational side of the business, but they have no interest in the product whatsoever. And that's fine. Oh, uh, right. You know, or there's other people that are like, oh, really? Like my grandfather had a pen or, you know, I, you know, I used to use pens all the time in college and, or like, I love doing hand lettering and stuff like that. Like they always give some kind of like, you can just tell the lights turn on. And that's what I've always loved about fountain pens. It's very self-selecting, you know? So for me personally, I'm doing this years and years and years. I've learned to recognize the early signs of engaging in a conversation and not just like full on like, oh my gosh, there's all these things and blah, 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 and going on and on about like all the things and like overwhelming people. Mm -hmm. But like, I'll ask them questions about, oh, hand lettering, that's cool. Okay, how do you do that? You know, what do you use? What do, you, do you follow anybody? Like that kind of a thing. I kind of like understand where they're coming from. And then I use a lot of analogies and metaphors. Yeah. So, you know, explaining any niche interests that you have, you know, explaining fountain pens, because it is, it is a, a bit much just to wrap your head around all the aspects of it, you know? But a lot of people, if I know, like there's people that I know they're, they're into like performance cars and they like to update their cars and stuff. So I'm like, well, it's the same thing like with a fountain pen, you know, if I'm explaining like a gold nib, it's like, it's sort of like, you know, you can have a Honda Civic, which is like your Lamy Safari, or you can have like your Nissan GTR, whatever, like your performance tuned, you know, thing like the average person driving it, they're not going to appreciate all the niceties of the performance tuned car. I might even think it's like too rough or too whatever. But for those that are really into it and they appreciate those finer aspects, you know, it's just kind of the same thing with pens. So like I try to find some kind of analogy and then people are like, oh, and I can usually like, I'm not saying like they're all of a sudden in love with fountain pens, but they get it. They yeah. get like, it's like, oh, that's not such a crazy thing after all. Like my weird thing is just as much justifiable as your weird thing, you know? So that's most of the conversations I end up having. But then there are definitely some people that like, <laughs> I've got a reputation now at this like networking thing because I've gone, been going to this for years now. Um, uh, I have a reputation for having introduced several other people to fountain pens and we have such a community. I mean, y'all all, anyone watching this video, you know what this community does, like it draws you in and the people are great. And it's like this little oasis on the internet. And 
especially other people who run e-commerce businesses, they know how rare and special that is. So when they experience it for themselves as customers, they end up becoming sort of evangelist even within that community. Yeah. And I'm known as like the pen guy nice. amongst the other business owners. So it's like, it's kind of cool just like how viral it's gotten even within that community. So it's, it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, just foot in the door, talk to people about it. The genuine enthusiasm, it comes through. Even if people aren't into it themselves, they can connect with that enthusiasm with something in their life. Yeah. And I find that that, you know, even if they're not into the details of the pen, they can appreciate the passion and enthusiasm and the intentionality. Yeah. Especially if they have a, a passion about something else. Everybody's got something. Everybody's, even if they're not like in a life stage where they're deeply pursuing their interest, everybody mm. has something that they're drawn to. And they can appreciate that, that enthusiasm around whatever their interest is. You can always find common ground with somebody, but it is a lot of work when you're like back to back, like talking to people and all that kind of stuff, it's especially if you're a super introvert. Um, anyway, so I'm a little more extroverted, so it's a little easier for me, but anyway. All right, next okay. question, Drew. Number three, we've got another twofer. And right. generally if I see twofers, you're like, like, all right, right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's not exactly, you know, new school season right now, but <laughs> no, <laughs> both EC Cardinal and Ikofsky 815 mm -hmm. or I cough sky. I don't know. Pick of sky. Um, yeah. So uh, we've got best pens for high school in one question and any tips for recommended products for using fountain pens at school in the other question. Okay. So we need to talk about school pens, Brian. School pens. I actually do have a couple of videos about this. <gasps> Three that I could remember off the top of my head. You've done videos. I have done videos on what? this. So I have a video, if you can check them out if you haven't seen them already, Best Pens for Students. Uh, we have a video that we came out with in 2019. Um, also have Best Pens for Newbies that we did in the OG of 2014, and then we did an updated one, Best Pens for Newbies 2021. I would consider newbies and students to overlap quite a bit, um, but I'll nuance some of my recommendations a little bit towards students specifically. Um, so just general tips um, without talking like specific products yet. Um, try to use something reliable and affordable. Logic there is it's not something so flashy that other students are going to want to take it mm. because unfortunately that does happen. That's a thing. Or if you happen to forget it in a classroom or whatever and it just disappears, you know, maybe your teacher took it. <laughs> I, would like say it. I would say the teachers um, probably run into that same problem, having to oh, bring things sure. to school and not having I'm the students sure. take them. I'm sure. So you want something nice, but not like so outwardly flashy nice that it will grow legs and walk away. Um, I would say you'll probably want to stick with maybe some finer nibs just because as a student, you may be given paper, probably inkjet printer paper, uh, yeah. and it's going to be pretty absorbent and you won't always get to control that. So, um, at least, you know, it's, it's never a bad idea to carry a couple of pens on you just to have some backups because you can't exactly bust out a bottle of ink in the middle of a test and fill it. The teacher might consider that to be disruptive depending on how cool they are. Um, so I would say having a backup pen is a good idea. At least one of the pens that you keep on have a finer nib on it, just so that if you deal with some berry absorbent paper, you can deal with it. Um, I would say you can use whatever ink you want, but maybe just keep in mind that your teacher is gonna have to read it. So if you go with something really smeary or really like shimmery or like really pale, light pink or yellow, that's hard to read. It's gonna get stacked up in a bunch of papers, shifted around. Yeah. And maybe not, don't go with like a, a bright red, like teacher correction red ink. That would not fly. Either, you know, I think it's cool and probably just a, a nice, I don't know, interesting break for the teacher to read something in a different color, I would imagine. I don't they know. Have, some of them, I think it's common to have some rules about ink color. They may, yeah, they may be specific about that. I don't know today. I mean, my kids are both in school and like most of their tests are it's, like on laptops. A, yeah, so it's, it's, it's like, I don't. It's, it's going to depend a lot. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe ask your teachers and stuff like that. Honestly, like most teachers, if they see that you're intentional about your writing instruments, they're going to be super into that because that's pretty rare for most students. And that shows like a degree of like effort and concerted like care towards your work that they'll probably appreciate even if they're not into fountain pens themselves. And they'll probably super appreciate you just asking like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm into fountain pens. I can use different colors, inks. Is there a certain the guidelines or like a, an ink preference that would be good for you? You know, I'm sure most teachers would super appreciate being asked something like that. And I'm, they probably I know, never I know get we've got a lot. Them. I know we've got um, teacher pen friends out there. I'd be curious to get yeah, their any teachers out there when you run across that with your students? Because I mean, there's gel pens and stuff that are all crazy, like shimmery and that kind of stuff too. I'm sure that I think you can use you those for some things, but not 
Not like, like a Scantron form test no, type no, no. thing. I don't you know, think that's they a whole use different Scantrons situation. anymore. They don't do that anymore. I don't think so. Am I dating myself a little bit? I think so. I, 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 am, an, I am an elder millennial. So, I don't think you know. that's a thing anymore. But then again, sometimes I go to vote and I'm surprised at the technology oh, I'm that's... using to vote. I'm like, what are we doing yeah, here? Yeah, you're going back in time. Anyway, the they yeah. might do Scantron somewhere. Yeah. Even the word sounds Hanging like Chads, so yeah. 80s, doesn't it? Scantron. Scantron. <laughs> the Scantron 5000. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, just ask your teacher. You know, teachers are cool. Like, just a general school advice. Just talk to your teachers. Like, they're people. They're not like alien robots that are going to, you know, come at you if you ask them questions. Unless you're watching The Faculty. Is which that is a, a movie horror where, movie with all the teachers were aliens, I oh. think, or monsters. Or okay, something. Yeah. all right, fair enough. Okay. Other that's, than that, that's... though, you should be okay. Okay. Well, as long as you're not in that environment, um, I would say you know, um, uh, keep a napkin or maybe just a paper towel handy in case you get ink on your fingers or you get ink on the grip or something like that. You know, never a bad idea. Um, and just keep the filling mechanism in, in mind. Keeping a spare backup pen is always a good idea. You know, if you have a pen that you can't tell how much ink is in it and you just go on using it. It runs out and then you're you're kind of stuck. So um, so again, I mentioned those three videos that I already did on pens for students or newbies. Um, but I kind of like, you know, obviously when we make videos like this, we try to vary them up a little bit. So I kind of looked at all three of them and was like, okay, let me let me give my new updated Ooh, take on okay. it. So yeah. Um, so of the recommendations I've made in the past, I was like, okay, these are ones are are a very solid list. Um, so I would say Twisby Eco, great choice. Very affordable pen in the grand scheme of things. Big ink capacity, very reliable writer. Looks nice, but not too flashy. So um, that's a good one. Pilot Metropolitan, very durable, reliable writer, fine nibs. Um, Lamy Safari, workhorse pen. Get interesting colors or boring if you don't want it to I mean, stand out too much. There's an entire country that has those in students' hands. Yeah, I mean, they literally so like all like, students in Germany use yeah. Safaris pretty much. Um, Pilot Varsity, especially for younger students. You know, great pen. That's great as a backup pen just in general because it's, I mean, it's always ready for you. Um, but it's so affordable and disposable that you don't really have to worry about forgetting it or losing it. Um, and then like a Platinum Preppy or maybe a Profonte, you know, something in that Platinum Preppy family. You know, reliable writing pens. The, the cap seals well. You know, you can even eyedropper convert it and get a huge ink capacity on if you want. So any of those pens are just such an easy, solid recommendation that have stood the test of time for me. Absolutely. My, if I had to pick one, I would say a Pilot Kakuno with a cartridge. Okay. Like that, that mm -hmm. I've come to love that pen so much for its consistency in performance and its durability mm. and just okay. kind of physically being resilient. So yeah. I love that as a student pen. And I think that, you know, your Lamy bullseye yeah. can't go wrong with that. I mean, there are they are student pens in a lot of for parts sure. of the world. For sure. So I'm not a big fan. I mean, yeah, you can use the pens that are like more designed as student pens, like the Pelican Twist and things like that. Or a the lot Lamy of those, like, ABC. Yeah, a lot of those, like especially for like a high schooler, they're gonna like they're gonna look like a child's pen. So yeah. you know, I, I don't think you need to go that far, unless you know, you are a child learning how to write, like the tr the hardcore aggressive triangular grip of a Pelican Twist might be helpful. But I don't I don't think you need to go that yeah that that hardcore. All right, there we go. Drew, I got a question for you. Yes. From Moonlit Crystal Palace. Oh my, that paints a picture. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about the new Tomoe River paper? Oh, Tomo. Tomoe. Way. I'm trying to, no, no, I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I wrote with some today. And I, uh, when we, I, I got my hands on some Sanzen paper, which is the company that um, bought Tomoe River and bought the recipe and began manufacturing the paper. I bought some on Etsy a while ago when I first found it available just to see. And I was all nervous, like, oh, God, here we go. This It's been, what, like three years since Tomoe announced that, like, oh, no, we're not going to be making it anymore. And the Internet died and all was sad. And people were like, what's well, going to be the new Tomoe? And then all of a sudden, actually, no, they sold it. It's going to still be made. Yeah. But what's it like? And I got my hands on it, and it writes just the same. So I mean, this is like a best-case scenario, right? So best-case scenario. Because best when they scenario. first announced it, they were like, we're not going to make Tomoe anymore. We're like, <gasps> there is no replacement for this paper. Like it's going, One of a kind. it's going to be missed. It's yeah. going to be a hole in the pen world. But uh, Tomoe Gama, which is the company that made Tomoe River paper, yeah. like they were not just a paper company. They make all sorts of stuff. No, they're like an abrasive company. They, like they, uh, they like an industrial abrasives company or do something. They don't so much. They don't make fountain pen paper. That's not what they do. But the company they sold it to is a paper company. So it's in good hands right now. 
we the the labeling looks the same. It's got the same logo. It's mm-hmm. still called Tomoe River. It still feels like Tomoe River. Writes like Tomoe River. Today, I took a swab of uh, I think it was Sailor One Twenty Three Ink Studio One Twenty Three, heavy shading factor that multi-tonal aspect. And I took a cotton swab and literally put the two together and just did that on one swab on two pieces of paper and. I could not tell the difference. Performance-wise, I could not tell the difference. I think yeah. I, if I had to like really nitpick, I think that while it's still 52 GSM, grams per square meter, mm-hmm. um, I think that the new Tomoe River is a little less transparent, like, mm-hmm. you know, than the old yeah. stuff, but it still is at the same weight. Still the same thickness. Yeah, and, same, yeah, same weight. So I feel like it's a little- The color is like maybe ever so slightly whiter, like barely. But yeah. if you looked at the two of them, like separately, you would never be able to tell the difference. You have no. to like hold them up next to each other and like cross your eyes. You really got to like, be see looking a for it. Yeah, yeah. Like but I, w- I would call it a nearly identical product. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you are a fan of Tomoe River and you are saddened by the potential loss of it to the market, rejoice and be happy because yeah. it's back. It's available and it kind of never left. Depending on which yeah, it's retailer, not really, it's not really back because it never right. went away. So we, was, yeah, with us, we did stop carrying the loose leaf sheets. So um, yeah, they the, weren't available to us anymore. Yeah, so yeah. those those did take a break, but they will be back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but our notebooks that we had with a Tomoe River paper, you know, we had enough of those, so there will be you know a seamless transition there mm-hmm. to the new stuff. And well, um, and 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 part of the the transition to this like three year change, part of what made it so confusing and difficult to communicate, not only were there like language barriers and stuff, um, but also the the fact that like when they make the raw paper, there are then like you know, they're not making notebooks and stuff. They're just making the paper. Yeah. And then other like notebook makers were buying the stocks of paper. So you had like multiple like levels along the the channel, the sales channel like process. So you had like the manufacturer, at some point they stopped making it, it transitioned. We don't really know exactly when that happened. And then every notebook maker had a stock of the old stuff and got sometimes some of the lot, new Sometimes a lot, sometimes a little. So it's like it was a rolling change yeah. with a lot of variables. And then every retailer like us had stock that they bought at varying times. So, you know, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't concern yourself too much with which version you're getting because we've no. never really seen a meaningful change in any pro- part of this process. If there, other if there than was, a, like general availability of certain yeah, products. If there was a meaningful change, we would be very strict about oh, yeah. what is coming from what, where we've, yeah. done extensive testing and we yeah. feel confident that you will be just as happy with the new stuff as you were with the old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've never really seen a major transition of a specific type of paper like this across like manufacturers. So this was all new for us, even being in the industry. But like you said, it was kind of best case scenario. Like best it, case, it really yeah. just worked out. There was a transition and nothing really changed and it's going to be the same good product that you always knew. That's really kind of all you need to worry about at this point. Yeah. So buy it wherever you can, whoever has the format of product that you like and yeah. live your best pen life. There you go. That's it's really great news. It really is. It yeah. all it all worked out. I yeah. wish I could go back in time to all the people that thought that, you know, they were buying up the stock of Tomoe and droves and be oh, like, yeah. And Especially like, hey, like during it's okay. during COVID, there it's was gonna like, be okay. There was like no guarantee that no. things were gonna work out. So like we were just no. we had a heavy skepticism towards any smoothness of that transition. Is very true. We're very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So all is well. Yeah. Enjoy Tomo Wave River for uh, the foreseeable future. Indeed. All right. We got one more, Drew. I do. Question. Okay. Number four. All right. Uh, from our old friend, Potter Watch 221B. Okay. And Potter Watch says, oh, this is a fun one, Brian. If you could choose the next Lamy All-Star or Safari colors, what would be your dream color? I got a couple. Or your nightmare color in your case, since you're only having dreams about <laughs> school. If I was back in school, but uh, but if I had a new color Safari, I might be okay. See, I never had fountain pens we in would, school. We would both have I definitely have, written with fountain pens in school. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I would wish. Have, I would. It would have made school. It would have been. Oh tolerable. my god, so much better. Yeah, so much better. Um, so my my first instinct was it's maybe not a cop out answer, but it's a it's a color that they've already had that I would bring back. Um, the orange Safari from two thousand nine. They haven't done a good orange in a long time. They did the copper orange safari. Orange. They did an orange safari in 2009. I have one and it's cool. Okay, so you're not talking about th- this is a shiny safari, not a matte one. This is a shiny safari. Because they did the Terra. Uh, well, they did the Terra. That's that's a bit on the, it's an orange, but it's got a lot of brown to it. It does. It this does. one's like a pure orange. Okay. So I could see either bringing that back or bringing that back in a matte format. 
Like that would be kind of cool. Okay. Um, and again, the Terra has black trim and the old that, that was going to be my next question. Silver trim. Would you want black? It would be a little Halloweeny or matching trim because they do that now, like the matching clip. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know how I would do it. Well, you, my instinct is like, just bring it back the way that it was. Okay. It was pretty great. All right. Um, so that's my easy cop out answer because it already exists and requires no creativity. Do you have a better one? Um, I do. Oh, I have a new thing that doesn't exist that there I thought of that I want. Bring it. Um, couple different ones actually. So one is uh, sticking with the safaris here. Right. I would love to see a translucent oh, safari. Oh God, yes, a, please. A tinted demonstrator. So please. whatever, call it a vista, call it whatever, but something like a deep teal or a cobalt blue. Translucent. Mm. Oh, that would get my motor cranking. So unpredictable. I know. It's really <laughs> shocking, isn't it? Um, that one. Or like a pearlescent color. Like you have like Kuwe oh, the Kuwaiko yes, iridescent yes, yes. pearl. Yes. How oh, good would that look? That would look so good. Safari. And it's it's the same like, you know, ABS plastic. Like that would totally work. They, they could do it. Oh. They could do it. And they're in Germany. It's just go just, next door I, and be I mean, like, hey, Kuwaiko, Kuwaiko, Kuwaiko. Did it. they're in Germany. I'm just saying. You got some of that pro lesson. I'm just saying. I mean, looking at like looking at their lineup, I know sometimes, you know, they don't they don't deviate too much from convention. No. You know, and and but I think that that would be cool. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would choose. Um, all star wise, um, petrol actually is a pretty great color. I would. If it had been a few weeks ago and petrol hadn't already yeah. existed, I would have said petrol yeah. in the All Star. But that translated uh, really well to aluminum too, shockingly well. So good. So the one that's missing, I think, would be um, like a vibrant purple, like a deep vibrant purple. So like an actual dark lilac. Yeah, not the dark purple. Like that's a bit plum colored. Oh. that they currently have. Oh right, right. I but forgot. yeah, like a dark lilac, maybe a little more vibrant than that, even um, with a little bit of a little bit of pink to it, but like more like a. a I don't know. I don't know. We're just a, like a violet, like a violet purple. I mean, they did that in a safari. Well, what about um, the, the candy? What um, about the uh, the um, purple diplomat arrow? That was a vibrant purple. Yeah, I think so. Let me yeah, that was like a nice kick into teeth up. purple. Let me let me check that. Real yeah, mine. Because that was my thought. I do wanted. We currently I, have I, that one? Uh, yeah, I think so. I wanted a green all star, like a bright, you know, Kelly green, like that. Yeah. So the like green, the arrow green. Yeah, like the arrow green. Yeah. So it can be done, mm -hmm. but all the all-stars have had this like wimpy, sad green. I want like a nice, punchy, clover field green. Wimpy, right? sad green. I want like a Lucky Charms green. Where Do we is not have this, the purple anymore? Where is this purple arrow? Well, maybe we just- I mean, we got maybe, the Ewoks. Maybe, maybe it's discontinued. We had one. Ewoks I think purple. it was an exclusive for a while. That was like a more of a magenta kind of, well, let me see. This is the problem is I don't remember. Either way, I know I it can be things. done. I know you can have a deep, rich purple, but even so, like the the um, the Elox is still an aluminum pen, so Let's it see. can be it can be done. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. This is See, I would want. Okay, so the Diplomat Arrow purple is a bit. It's a bit pink. I, I would want something more of a true like okay. violet. But violet but the this. vibrance but the vibrance is achievable. Yeah yeah yeah, it is. But it's it's difficult anodizing purple is really really hard so i wouldn't expect that that would actually be possible but even that color like would be an amazing purple that would be that would be cool yeah but it's not quite the purple it's that i'm good enough talking for you. about uh, it's not quite the purple that i envision but it would be good. so that's not it and the current purple all star is not it so what? it's like something in between uh, okay. something in between cuz the All current right. the current one is a bit too red like it's current a, a bit pretty, a bit pretty, red brown pretty pinky yeah. this one is a bit pink I would want something more of like a true violet. Okay, so the dark the dark lilac is pretty true violet. That is, that one's pretty dark too though. Yeah. But I mean, it would look different in metal, yeah. you know, than it would in that plastic. Okay. So yeah, like a dark a dark lilac, maybe a little bit more vibrant, but but that in all-star form would look mm -hmm. amazing. You know what I think would look cool in a safari? What's that? Matte gray, like a light gray, because I think it would mm. look like concrete. Okay. Because it'd be bumpy. Yeah, I don't know why I want a concrete. So like safari. the not as dark as the charcoal, a little bit lighter than that. No, like like stone gray. Yeah, okay, I'd be into that. Yeah, yeah. I think that would just, and I think it'd be easy for them to do. I'm not we oh, yeah, be asking totally for something it. crazy. In the yeah. safari, they can do almost any color because that yeah. that ABS plastic, you can make anything. Yeah, yeah, I just think with that matte texture, I think it would look kind of cool. It look kind of like a rock. Okay. I don't know why I like that, but I do. Why do you like that? Don't know. What about brown? I like already have light. a brown one. Yeah, but that I was got like my a brown bear. That was like a special thing. Like I don't I'm care. Talking like a I regular, got it. 
like available as a like you know you literally don't care because you have one i don't care about anybody else <laughs> i've got my bear wow okay Everybody so else you can would, fend for themselves. You would let everybody else have a fuddy duddy concrete pen. To be fair, Brian, no <laughs> one is beating down the door for a brown safari. I mean, you're right about that. I'm just saying. All right. Fair enough. They, they can have a concrete pen instead. All right. Well, not that any of this matters because no. I, I don't know that they listen to anything. They that we certainly say, do not. But would love to know what colors y'all would choose if you have any other ideas. They've done a lot. I mean, I will say they've yeah. like, you got to nuance the colors to get something they haven't really done. But Yeah, they've done you know. a lot. How would you feel about, I'm throwing this out there, but like the, um, like Visconti has with their Van Gogh or like the new opera, um, like a modeled color. So like mixing, cause that's, I believe that's injection molded as well. I, it, I can't That even, in a safari, it would, it would be a bit busy. That. It would be a bit busy. I, I don't know. It. I don't it's know how I feel about such a departure from the norm for them. I, I, it's it like my weird. brain's not even allowing it. It would be weird. I don't know, but it's interesting. And it's interesting as a thought experiment. Yeah. Take a Van Gogh like a Van Gogh Starry Night mm-hmm. or a Pollard Willows and put that on a safari. I would also say that a matte white wouldn't be terrible. Hmm. Um, so uh, I mean, they've done white and they've done white on the Joy, but yeah. I don't know that they've done a matte like white. Like a matte I white. I, I, okay. I think that might be kind of cool. Okay. All right. I could be into that. What kind of trim would you put on your matte white pen? Would you go matchy matchy No, I'd on go white on white. White on white. White clip, white everything. All right. Just a... Just white out. All right. White out pen. That'd be cool. I did that with cool. a Game Boy once. Yeah? Just white, white, it white, white buttons, white yeah. case. I actually sprayed the case from the inside so you could still see some of the little injection molding things. Oh, but nice. the outside was all nice and glossy. Yeah. But the interior was, you know, uh, white uh, hmm. matte spray paint. All right. So, yeah, it looked kind of cool. Nice. I all don't right. play it, but cool. of course that's what I do. <laughs> sure. All right. That's all we got for questions. Drew, I got a hypothetical or two. Okay. A- AI generator. AI generator. You ready? Okay. You ready to do it? Oh, okay, yeah. To be fair, I came up with these questions while we were talking. So um, <laughs> good. I don't know how good it's going to be. Um, oh, it, it uh, my first one went away. Hang on. Uh-oh. I like regenerated it and it replaced my existing one. Okay, no, here, hang on. Here we go. Here we go. I got it. Okay. You found it. All right, so my prompt was, what is a funny, eccentric, hypothetical question two people can debate? Okay. Eccentric. So this is this is coming in blind for both of us. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. If you could only have one condiment for the rest of your life, would you rather have ketchup that tastes like pickles or pickles that taste like ketchup? I don't want either of those. So it has more. Okay. On one hand, you would have the classic ketchup flavor, but with a zesty pickle twist. <laughs> on the other hand... You would have the satisfying crunch of a pickle, but with the sweetness and tang of ketchup, it's a tough decision that could lead to some lively and eccentric debate. Eccentric debate. Right, it's a bit on the nose, chat GTP. Yeah. I, I, if, also, if, a pickle if, if that tastes like ketchup, that's not a condiment. To me, you're basically saying, would you rather stop eating pickles or stop eating ketchup? Because one is going to become horrible. Yeah. So if I had to stop eating something, I'd probably stop eating pickles. Um because mm. I just pickles just don't come into my life as much as ketchup does. When I when I want French fries with ketchup, mm-hmm. I really want French fries with. Ketchup. I usually don't okay. have ketchup. I really don't. Ketchup is not important to me. Oh. Um, so I'm more of a, I'm more ketchup forward. But when I when I have a like a you know if I'm at like a um, you know uh, a craft fair or an outdoor farmers market or something and they've just got like a booth like just a big old boat of fries like mm. and I have that one of those pump things that. Ketchup, like, yeah, I'm going to get some of that. Oh, yeah. So it has to be. But not if that ketchup tasted like pickles, though. That yeah. would be weird. Well, no, no, no. I'm, it has to, though. If, if uh, In this scenario. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. I, it, wouldn't, I wouldn't be into that. No, I, w- I would. I think I'd rather have pickles that taste like ketchup. Yeah, if I had pickles that t- taste like ketchup, I would rather just eliminate pickles from my yeah, diet. Same. So. I'd, it's easier to go without pickles. Yes. Than without ketchup. Yeah. And if, and if a pickle that. did show up, like on a burger, and it tasted like ketchup, whatever. There's already ketchup there. So. Okay. Who, who cares? So basically, I would just say I no longer eat pickles plain. Okay. Because that's nasty. All right. So that question, eh, so so. Yeah. Let's try one more. If animals could talk, which species do you think would be the most likely to become politicians and why? Oh, that's a good one. I, I kind of want to say a bald eagle just because, you know, how um, like America, you know, um, I'm thinking Sam Eagle, you know, <laughs> business. Okay. But, uh, 
as far as personality goes, it depends. See, I could be very pessimistic about this answer. You can go dark real quick. And with I could this just pick a weasel or something like that. But um, <laughs> I could, yeah, I could be a little bit more sunny and optimistic if I chose as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it kind of, it you kind of wonder. I think that just like um, the human kingdom, the animal king, it, the animal kingdom would be full of good and bad politician choices. Mm. Um, you could choose a raccoon, and depending on the type of raccoon it is. Who knows how good of a politician it would be. Mm. Um, temperament wise, if, if I'd like a good world leader, I think the world might benefit from more hedgehogs. Hedgehogs? I think they're just a noble, noble species. Okay. <laughs> I got to admit, other than Sonic the Hedgehog, the made-up character, I don't know a lot about hedgehogs in their natural Well, they're lovable, for one. I think we could use that. Okay. I think that if, uh, you know, we saw a hedgehog up there and, you know, vote for hedgehog, I feel like it would be a unifying presence for the country. Mm. You know? I think if you're going to have a good politician, it would be a golden retriever. That no, would just Nobody be dislikes like, a golden retriever. Everybody loves a golden retriever. Yeah, you're right about that. Very loyal, very self selfless very servient sure. serving yeah, of others. Ser- yeah 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 that's not you a know, bad one I think do, do, dogs would be i would absolutely elect a dog before a lot of other human beings yeah so um yeah vote for dog yeah i would you, say golden shepherd i'm gonna i'm gonna choose not to go dark on this question great it's let's too, not it's too easy to go negative on politics there we go there are good and noble politicians out sure. there. sure and in the golden retriever shall be one of them there you go i'm with you i'll bet i'll bet you right. know you got my vote brian all right i convinced you there we go let's do it elect gold, as long as it's goldie. not a, as long as it's not a golden doodle i have a problem with those well there's no doodle that, right it's a it should be a a, a Goodle. I've told you about this a, then. A haven't golden I? poodle, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I love the there's actual no animal. I've got, no no, I've got nothing against the animal. But yeah, it, there's an invented D there. It's, yeah. you know, it, yeah, I think it. Unnatural. I think it came from Labradoodle because the Labrador yeah. has a D. And right. then someone said, okay, well, this is a golden uh, doodle. And like, oh, okay, cool. Wait a second. Hold on. No. You're taking, you're taking yeah. the D from Labradoodle, no. but you don't get the D. You, you, you don't so get to take a golden take that. labradoodle because then that would make a golden doodle make sense. That's true. That's true. But no, golden noodle is what it should be. So, uh, if golden you, noodle, that golden, sounds like a, if they, if that's what they want to do. Dish of some so, kind, so if you, you have know? a golden doodle, I'm going to call it a golden noodle. All right. There you go. Or a, I'm going to call it a goodle. A goodle. <laughs> that yeah. sounds really weird. Yeah. Give me a goodle. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. That's a great segue into our Whew. what's happening nonsensical <laughs> portion of the show. <laughs> So the rest of this will be total non-helpful nonsense. So let's get into it. What's happening? Well, it was a busy week for me, Brian. Yeah, you yes. weren't here, that's for sure. No, I was not here. I went to Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. the city of angels. Yes. All right. Was um, it angelic? Did you have an angelic experience? I don't know. It was. It was. It you was, were flying in the sky. It was quick, and I was there for like a day, and then yeah. I came back. But you know, I saw Ventura Boulevard and. Okay. I went to Target. That's a road. You went to Target? I feel like that's an experience kinda, that you well, can have I kinda anywhere. Like, I got there. I was so tired. And like, I just kind of looked out my hotel window and I'm like, oh, look, Target. <laughs> I'm just drawn to it. Just because in my personal that's life, I go to Target brand, way brand, too much. Brand recognition. I know. There. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, could, we'll, we'll I, could, I, could, I could go for some Target Starbucks coffee right about now. So I walked about five blocks over to the Target. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is familiar. This is nice. Right. Although the Target was really laid out weird, man. Yeah, like they do it different. The registers were not near the doors. Oh, it's like you walk in, and the registers are against the right wall, Hmm. like not pointing toward the doors, not at all. Freaked me out a little bit. But anyway, that was that was that was fun. Um, Came back, and then uh, I had Tuesday and sorry Thursday and Friday off until the Baltimore Pen Show over the weekend. So I'm like, let me do some stuff. And during those days, not just lay around, do nothing. I want to actually do an activity. And luckily, I had some parts arrive from um, various other retailers of um, Game Boy Pocket. Uh, oh wow! Enhancements and upgrades and modifications. That's so I was back. like, "This is this is my time. This is what I'm going to do." So I believe it was Friday. I sat down and um, took apart one of my Game Boy Pockets, mm-hmm. and that was my favorite Game Boy. By the way, it came mm-hmm. out right after the original. But it was like half the size of the original. Still no colors or anything like that. But I, I, you don't need colors. Made to fit in your pocket. And only two AAA batteries, as opposed to the four AA that the original had. Wow. So 
I love that. It takes the same cartridges mm-hmm. though, right? Same cartridges, yep. Yeah. Wow. So that was the way to go. That was like the that was the little Game Boy I played the most, like on the bus and stuff okay. when I was a kid. I never had one of those. I had a black one. I had a black one. And then I got a Game Boy Color in Atomic Purple, which is like that trademark oh. clear purple that Nintendo used to yeah. do. That would be a good color for a Safari. Oh, you're right. Atomic, Atomic Purple. purple. Oh yeah. my God. Yes, right? Please. Right? Please. Come on, Lummy. So the case that I bought for my Game Boy was an Atomic Purple case. So I replaced the, the shell is what they're called. Okay. So I bought, I replaced the shell, um, replaced the um, screen. So, you know, I had to take apart the ribbon cable and everything like that. Add a wow. new nice, bright um, IPS LCD display. Oh, cool. So it's still not color because the games don't support color, but right. the very bright, vibrant, clean You can pixels. actually like see what's yes, happening? Yes, exactly. Is it still like green and black? Um, so the pocket wasn't green and black. Um, oh. The pocket was black and white. Oh. So the original Game Boy was the green screen. Oh, yeah. But then the, you can the, barely see what's happening. But the pocket was just black and white. But the cool thing was um, it required some light soldering. So I had to solder the screen oh. to the power um, to the power switch. And then I soldered um, another point on the screen to a sensor, like a touch sensor. So mm-hmm. you would just like kind of tap the outside of the screen, hmm. the outside of the case, and it would change color. So you could change it to like blue, That's red, cool. green, orange, or classic yellowy Game Boy if you wanted to do it like that. So I did that. I also ch- did a battery modification so that um, you can set it on a um, wireless, you know, charging deck and just charge, oh, charge cool. it that way. Yeah. yeah. So bring I bought- it, Bringing I, into the 21st century. I here. bought a special Game Boy shell that supposedly was ready for modifications and okay. which meant that the larger screen fit right in there. I didn't need to clip the, or trim anything. But what I didn't know was that it did not fit the battery mod. So oh. I had to go out to the uh, shed with my Dremel and kind of hollow out the whole back battery compartment. Okay. And then took some little micro file things and smoothed out the edges. That took a little while, but eventually the battery got in there. Um, but it's in there, it's working, it's all great. Right. And now I can ignore it forever and not play it because that's, <laughs> that's what, what all my do. that's what all my projects are. Like I'll do this thing and then I told myself I'd play it. I did bring it to um the Baltimore Pen Show. Didn't yeah. play it, but... <laughs> But you, you had it. I want to. You you had I want it to. just in case. I know. So that was fun. That was my fun little um, That's project. Cool. Yeah. And then I was ready. I had my little rest and I went to the Baltimore Pen Show. So um, mm. Saturday morning, I got up, got to the Baltimore Pen Show, right, as they were um, admitting folks and immediately saw some friendly faces. I That's hadn't cool. hadn't seen, you know, these friendly faces since, you know, the uh, San Francisco Pen Show um, in yeah. August, late August. Yeah. So it was delight seeing everybody and hearing the random turkey hammocks and things like that. Um, And, uh, you know, got to see all of the different vendors there and get my hands on some pens that I don't normally get my hands on Mm. and see pens displayed, made look all pretty that I don't normally get to see here because it's just a warehouse. So we don't get to see a lot of these pens really looking their best. Yeah. So especially like together as a group. Yeah. You know, we're often looking at pens like one at a time as we get them in kind of a thing. Yeah. It's really, it's really awesome. And I, if anybody has a nearby pen show, um, I highly encourage you to go stop by. At least go to one once. Yeah. Just experience it. It's, it's like something, it's nothing. It's, it's yeah. like nothing else. Yeah. It's very cool. Uh, one of the highlights was I um, met this nice lady who had three boys, uh, probably in the range of, you know, five to 11, you know, there was like a, a, a small, medium, large, you know, child, child. assortment there. <laughs> okay. um, and she was like, oh, hi, you know, you're Drew. I'm like, yeah. So, and then I was just thinking she would say like, ah, thanks for the, you know, I watch your YouTube. But she was mm-hmm. like, my kids love watching the pen. I was like, you're kidding me. And they did. And they asked if I could get a picture. So I got down with the three little boys. Oh, and that's I was awesome. like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they were so polite, so nice. It was, that was like one of the best interactions. I mean, they're probably going to remember that like for the rest of their life. They, they were, and I was, I was like saying, you're, you're a celebrity to them. That was, I, I, I mentioned that uh, they had the best smiles because, like, you, you have kids. I have, I have a kid, and you say smile for a photo, and my son's like, ah, oh, it's that like super forced. I'm like, what is smile. that? Yeah. You never like, ah, what? That? You're not Wallace <laughs> you or Gromit. Like, yeah. come on, man. But these kids were like smiling naturally. I'm like, whoa, what is that? Look at these good smiles. Like, yeah, legit. Yeah. Um, but that was like such a cool thing. That's so cool. I'm like, cool. and again, like we've got these three little boys listening to us and we've got a cowboy listening to us. Like what the heck, man? Like it's the, best. Oh, the best. I love it. It's wild. So wild. That's so cool. But it was, it was a fantastic pen show and um, reminded me like, not like I forgot. Like I always know that our community is just the most 
delightful set of human beings on the planet. Yeah. But um, yeah, just lots of love, lots of love. And, uh, you know, I, I always tell you guys, if I've ever met you, like I, I could see you right there through the lens. Like every time I go to the, one of these things, I come back into this room mm-hmm. and I look into that camera and it's like, just kind of see everybody almost. And yeah. it's just such an invigorating experience and to connect with everybody out there is just a true treat. So thank you for everybody that showed up. If you said hi, thank you. Um, and um, yeah, uh, if you didn't say hi and you're just watching, still thank you. The, we're, we still feel the support and it's yeah. magical and delightful and terrific. That's cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, um, when I got back, I got, I arrived just in time to go over a friend's, uh, our friend's house, you know, a normal Sunday thing. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to just go straight home, but Shannon was like, you should, you should come to dinner. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, you, you, you need to come. I was like, oh, okay. Mm. And it's my birthday in a week. So I was like, oh, oh you're like, okay. This I'm, is like that. This is weird. There might, there might be something. It's and I'm so it's tired. Easy. It took me two and a half hours to oh get to Baltimore. Gosh. Four yeah. hours to get back uh, because the traffic was so bad. This is after you've just been to LA. Too. Yeah. So, so I'm tired. So I got there and, you know, Shannon and Archer are there. I'm just like, I really got to go to the bathroom. I walk into the bathroom and um, Josh and Jeffrey have this like kind of board with little white letters that they change just for fun in the yeah. bathroom. And it said, happy early birthday, Drew, up there. I was like, oh, they're doing a thing. They're doing a thing. They made breakfast for me. So Aww. they had waffles, biscuits, gravy, all this stuff. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So it was very nice. I was so tired, but it was it was so, <laughs> yeah. so nice. Um, That's cool. They got me two new button up one with the flamingos all over it one just crazy hawaiian one nice so you gotta was, keep up that reputation yeah man. my friend eddie got me some corgi socks so like <laughs> they they knocked it out of the park that's you know, awesome. they're a terrific bunch of people that's awesome but uh so that that was that was done um slept really good that night though oh, i bet slept really good that night nice and in between all that just watching a lot of tv we're watching currently watching the mandalorian every friday because shannon goes with her friends to watch rupaul's drag race that's her process every that's friday right. she goes watch drag race archer and i stay home and watch mandalorian right. and that's been fantastic i started the last of us um okay. well on hbo because i've heard that's really good i played the game the game the first one anyway okay which is another pedro pascal show apparently we're just watching all of pedro pascal stuff fair enough he's hot right now though he's, 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 he's yeah. everywhere um and then started uh actually no finished severance last <sighs> night i know how good was that, that finale that last episode man like what a wasn't ra- the payoff for that episode the, the like, ramp up from episode oh, one to nine was like it's s- a crescendo it is it's just a it's a consistent just yes. boop, 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 boop. man yes. wild i've been working on drew hard for a year you have like to get him to watch this show man well for a while man. i didn't have apple tv but my brother generously yeah. um yeah uh lent his password <laughs> so that was that was epic that was I knew you would like it. And the the, and the, like, the, next, the, the second season, the second season hasn't even like started filming yet, though. I know they're they're, they're, they're committed to it, but it's it's. Yeah, I mean, you can't rush perfection. Man. It's just yeah. That was really that's, good. That's the only. I'm not a. I mean, I'll rewatch like comedies like Thirty Rock and stuff like that. You watched it. You rewatched this one like three times. I right? watched it through. I binge watched it through, and then I immediately I was like, "What?" Because I knew I knew I missed so right. much. I rewatched it. Um, the second time through, I was able to convince Rachel to watch it. Mm-hmm. She doesn't usually like sci-fi drama type things. Shannon had a tough time with this one at the beginning yeah. because she has it's, it's heavy she, she has anxiety and yeah. the feeling of being trapped. Like she it's, it's, had a tough time with it at the beginning, but then as it did, kinda, she, did it pay off. It did. For her yeah, too? Okay, it absolutely good, did. Good, good, yeah. She had just had to get through the first couple seasons. Yeah, and it was okay. Yeah, Rachel. Rachel was like, you know, normally when I petition her for things. It it's not you know it's it's Rachel Rachel she's a hard one to budge like she knows what she likes mm-hmm. and it's usually there's no surprises with her which I love but this just, this one I was, like, this I one I was like she had some resistance and I was like no just trust me on this one you cashed it in I cashed it in all right and and she's like all right I get it like I, she's not gonna rewatch it again and stuff like that right. like, she's not as nearly as hardcore into it as I am but I was like okay so I rewatched it with her the second time and then I watched it. I think six more times after that. Like, six. I think I've rewatched it. I've lost count. It's either you could have watched so many other shows. I've either seen it through seven or eight times. Oh my god. Yeah, and wow. that was all within like the first couple of months. Like Brian. I just, I have never like fallen that deep that hard into a show. What? Now, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I've, I've just, I just. Oh, you're good. Kept finding. You're good. I kept you're finding good for like another couple of years. Yeah, yeah, probably. Wow. Yeah, but it's that's good. crazy. It's good. 
And this weekend, um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Saturday, I'll need to go to my grandparents' um, little house on uh, the river. And it's, uh, mm. you know, kind of nearish Chesapeake, but mm -hmm. uh, it's been a little river vacation property. It was a trailer for most of my childhood. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, last, you know, 10, 15, 20, I don't know, however many years, they got one of those two-part homes and, you know, yeah, yeah. that's there now. Uh, but yeah, really kind of grew up there, like going mm. out on the pier on the boat, fishing and crabbing, putting in the crab pots in the pier and everything like yeah. that. They're selling it. Uh, mm. So um, we're going to just kind of clear it out on Saturday. Oh, so that's bittersweet. Now, I haven't been there in a long time. Archer's never even seen it. So okay. it's been like 10 years. So yeah. But yeah, it's it, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It's, um, it's, but yeah. no, they're not using it a lot. After my grandfather died, it just mm. kind of, my Mimi went up there every now and then um, with some of her too many old lady friends, but keeping it up and stuff. Is probably yeah. Better. Keeping it up is a lot. Yeah. And it's a really valuable property being waterfront too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to go ahead and sell it. So oh. we'll go up there on Saturday. I think I'll just go. I'll probably, I don't think Shane and Archer are going to go. Yeah. But, bittersweet, um, but yeah. yeah, that's a thing. So that's yeah, kind of looking forward to it. Kind of not. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. TBD on that one. Yeah. I have an interesting relationship with like, places like that. Like I have a distinct memory of when uh, I basically grew up in like one house mm -hmm. and my parents sold it basically like as I graduated high school. Yeah, that's weird. So like there was a lot of just like finality of a season of life yeah. that happened around that same time. Oof. And yeah. I remember like after we cleared the whole house out, I just like was looking into like the empty house, like from, oh. from the garage. I was like, I've entered this door probably tens of thousands oh, of times. Yeah. And I just looked in the house and I would, you know, it was just me. I was just there by myself. I was, I think, 18 at the That's time. Poignant. I just looked at it and I was just like, it's been a good house. And I was like, thank you, house. Yeah. And I was just like, all right. Like, I'll probably never set foot in here no. again. And I was just like, all right. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. And then it, I left and it was like, okay, that's done. The River House is like the last place in my life that it has more or less remained the oh, yeah. same. Or the property the anyway. Yeah. Not, yeah, not yeah. so much the house. Yeah. So, yeah, once that's gone... There's not going to be a place that uh, has remained the same other mm. than Yen Ching Restaurant on West Broad. <laughs> and you know how I feel about that beautiful Chinese restaurant. It hasn't Chinese been updated restaurant. since the 80s. I, that, that's, 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 the, that's the last bastion, man. Oh, okay. That's going to be my new home. All right. That's going to be my new happy place. Already is. There Still is. There you go. I love it so much. Nice. What do you have going on? Um, well, I also traveled last week. I was in San Diego. So not too far from you, but far enough. We were there for different reasons. Um, but I went to a, a networking, you know, e-commerce conference thing doing all um, the businesses all the businesses, businesses, businesses. yeah so six I, sigma uh not six sigma but you know building legos lots of the, <laughs> that's right <laughs> i had lunch and class These are 30, 30 rock references um no i mean it was good uh so this is basically like you know 300 or so e-commerce business owners get together and just talk that's not that many about thing no, and it's actually for, grown. for, for, for a conference like yeah it's it's that's why I it's hear, like I, it's not really a conference i hear a conference like i a, picture like no, it's it's pretty it's pretty intimate, okay. and uh, so I like that about it because I get to talk to a bunch of people. Yeah, that actually sounds your, yeah. your speed. You like to yeah. network and stuff, especially because like everybody sells different stuff. But what I like about this, I've been in other networking groups and stuff where it's like there's a realtor and an insurance agent and you know all these other things, and I'm like, well, we we really deal with a lot of different problems yeah. than most other businesses. But when you're with all e-commerce people everybody's dealing with social media mm -hmm. algorithm changes and shipping carrier logistics and inventory you know projections and uh you know all these things global trans shipping and stuff like that like containers getting lost at sea yes all of these things so even if somebody's in a different industry they're still like super pertinent helpful stuff to talk to that's cool to, to, to talk about is so, this an annual thing yeah they do one every yeah. year um yeah, it's, an, it's a private group, so I'm not, I know I'm not like talking about what it is or who it is or anything, but it's like a trade secret sort of a deal. Um, but uh, I've been in this group for years and it's been super, super helpful. Um, so yeah, I have several key things that I'm thinking deeply about. You know, obviously AI has been a big topic of conversation and, you know, I am like very much a futurist thinker and like I've watched YouTube videos and tried to be like stay in the news on AI, but I haven't really played a lot with it, which is why I'm like doing so much of it now. It's exciting. But, you know, that's, that's, I, that's I went so much the, your dad coming out in you, though. Oh, I know. My dad is exactly the same. Yeah. Way. In fact, my dad has been on Chat GPT since, no, like, has since he December. Really? Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. 
Um, oh, he's just so, gonna, he's yeah, just my dad's retired it. and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> he's course. like writing poems to all of his Nick friends and neighbors using it. And he's like, so forward thinking. I remember, I think that the first time I ever <laughs> saw like one of those handheld video cameras, I think it was your dad oh, yeah. at, like a, at a, like a school play or something like that. Oh yeah. He bought one of these giant video cameras like in 1984. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, that's so expensive back then. Yeah. But he, you know, um, anyway, so, uh, lots to talk about AI and obviously like there's all kinds of things, you know, it's very much in the news and all that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but this was contextualized to like people in e-commerce and just like, how are people using it and all that? And I would say like that session in particular was like one of the most, uh, I don't know, like if it's sort of like when e-commerce like first came about and social media was starting to like really take hold and you were, and it was like, oh, this is like really going to change a lot. This is here that, to stay. Like smartphones and all that. Like this is really like people are afraid of it, have questions, you know, there's opportunities, mm -hmm. all kinds of, there's buzz and excitement. I was like, this is that same feeling because we've been in this industry long enough where it's like with the same sort of disruptive type feeling, but it's happening at like 10 times the speed. Like the amount of like layers of things that are being built on this AI stuff already, like my head was spinning a little bit. I actually had to like go lie down after that session because it was like so much for me to take in. So it is interesting. I'm not like all doom and gloom, like, oh, it's gonna take all our jobs. But I'm like playing with it a little bit and I'm like, wow, there's some really cool potential for ways that this can help. Like I'm a, personally, just like my mindset is like, I don't think like, oh, robots are gonna take over and all that kind of stuff. Cause like, I understand enough about the technology. I know that's not what's happening, but for me, it's like, I am all for let's automate and mechanize everything that like is just the repeatable stuff that mm -hmm. humans aren't as good at. Like we have really good people here. Humans are incredibly creative. We have personalities, we connect with each other. The more of like the just day-to-day -day just junk that we can get out of the way and automate, the more like we as people can shine through and connect yeah. with each other. Like that's- Do the people stuff. Yeah, that's where mindset, my mindset is at. So I'm all about like, let's optimize what we do in our business so that we can just have people do what people do best more of the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for those types of opportunities as they come about. So um, thinking about that type of stuff in terms of, you know, you know, content creation, generating ideas, you know, like sometimes like, gosh, we've been doing this like 13, 14 years now. Like we've made 2000 videos on YouTube. It's like, sometimes you feel a little creatively bankrupt and it's just like, oh, I just need like some fresh ideas and stuff like that. So like even just using a tool like that, like, hey, what are, what are some good video ideas? And even if it just gives you half garbage, it's new ideas and it's things yeah. that like can help prompt stuff. So it's I'm not, excited It's for not those. like we don't have at least a couple garbage videos out there. <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely do. Um, so that was pretty exciting. And then there's lots of other things, you know, related to like content creation or like shipping logistics, you know, leadership stuff, people, you know, management type stuff that, that was always really good. And I made some good connections with individuals too. Let um, me ask you, did you do your standard Twisby Eco Lamy 2000 situation. I did. I didn't have an Eco. I had the 580 um, Prussian Blue. Okay. You yep. Usually, you usually. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You did the standard yep. conference pen setup. Yep. It's like a, you're like a video game character with a loadout, like a mm -hmm. conference loadout. Yep. Same. And I tell you, it came in handy. Like, yeah. No. You, you everywhere I went, even if like so, like I'd go to the conference you, you and I had the Twisby, my so you can show them the sloshing. Yep. And, yeah. So it's like if we were going to like Tried whatever, like a dinner, like gala, mm -hmm. whatever event type thing, and I wasn't like sitting down taking notes. I'm not going to carry my notebook and backpack and all that. But I made sure like, oh, you know, my jacket, let me put a pen in there because I know people are gonna ask or conversations about fountain pens are gonna come up. And I'm like, it's so much easier just to show people like, what is a fountain pen? They're like, oh, this, okay. You know, so yeah, I definitely did plenty of that. I so, love that you have like a conference set up. I like, do, I, so I, great. I know what I'm doing at this it point. It works, yeah. I forgot a couple other key things. Like I forgot like my phone charger and had to go buy one at a drugstore. I almost Just the did. cable, just the cable part. I, I have an iPhone did. and it's that stupid iPhone cable. I just needed that thing. That one part, I left it on the table as I was packing up and like leaving and I forgot it. So I have like 20 of them at home, but I had to go buy one because I needed to charge my, it was, mm. anyway, it was annoying. But um, so I forgot like little, and I forgot chapstick. Uh, me too. And it's like super dry Dude. out there. Oh my God, my lips were, bur I'm still recovering. Yeah. So I'm like, I, have, I need the Virginia humidity. Like my lips, I know. they need oh my God. I 80% was humidity at all times. I was dying, it was hell. So. <laughs> I have a little toiletry bag, a little green thing. And Shannon used it when she went to New York recently. Okay. And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. She took my chapstick out of it mm. and she got lipstick on it. So she didn't put it back. So she's like, like this is mine now, I guess. <laughs> so I'm you. there suffering. Mm. I was like, Shannon, why did you put the stuff back? She's like, oh, it had lipstick on it. I'm like, I don't care. I, I, would, lipstick. So, I would so wear lipstick right now. Yeah. Oh, I was dying. It's rough. It's dry out there, man. It's oh, the desert. It was so bad. Yeah. And um, 
guess what I did get to use though? Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what, was the, what, why did, why did the company give us that free thing? Was it employee pre? No, no. Everybody got to pick from like a prize what on the website. Thing? What free um, thing? What are you talking about? It was like we all got to pick from this website a bunch of cool prizes and stuff. What yeah. was the occasion for that? Uh, I mean, we've done stuff like that. It's for no a couple of times. Was I'm it, trying to remember like what was it? Like some kind of employee appreciation day or something like that. I don't know. But it was a cool thing. Like a lot. Yeah. Like not just like random. Like oh look, it's a cheap no name watch or something like that. It was like a really cool thing. So I yeah. my, the thing I picked was a um a duffel bag made from a billboard, like a recycled billboard. Oh. And I finally got to use it. Oh, cool. It was great. I love it. It's lined. It's got an internal pocket and everything like that. Nice. And the billboards, it's just all green with like one little black. I think it, there was a letter there or something like that. Huh. But I love it so much. That's cool. It's a super cool duffel bag. Nice. I don't know. I was excited to use That's it. That's awesome. Did um, you get anything from that website? Uh, I did. I got some copper mugs. Like a, a like for like a for like a like the Moscow mules? mule. Yeah, type okay. Mug. I saw yeah. those on there. Yeah, like I like those. Nice. Um, they're like handmade by somebody. Yeah, they're yeah. like hammered. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then while I was out there, I did get to do one recreational activity, which was hiking in Torrey Pines hmm. State Reserve, which is cool. So Torrey Pine is like a specific type of pine tree that like only grows like there and like one other place. It's like a pretty like rare tree was apparently it, was it difficult for you to walk around the woods and not want to chop things down i mean did you have a tough time with that it's a state reserve and i understand you know but it was cool because like i mean we were it was like it was actually like a guided tour so i but guess they're like, like, that, like one, that one could probably come down that one looking yeah that would mm. i mean i was definitely like checking it out and i was looking <laughs> at like oh, how do the rings grow on this tree because it's, like, it's like a totally different environment it's yeah. like it's like basically like cliffside you know with the ocean so oh, like wow. you know even just in terms of like the wood characteristics because like all the trees are basically wind blown from the ocean and like the salt water and stuff like it the wood behaves differently because it's like you know pounded with windy like salt water all the time yeah so it's just it was fascinating to be with a guide who like knew all the stuff inside and out and there's like agave plants and were you like asking him natural... a lot of wood questions it was it was a lady actually oh, okay and i was asking plenty of questions yes but did, she was did, sharing. She knew quite a bit. Did was, your did your tour group want you to kind of stop asking? My tour group was questions. good. They had other activities, so okay. it was all self selecting of people that like wanted to do this walk. Okay. So and it was beautiful. It was like they weren't know, like, why does this guy keep asking about wood? I mean, they all kind of know that I'm like, <laughs> or they knew at the end of that tour for sure. <laughs> They're like, this guy's a real wood nerd. <laughs> what do you sell again? Fountains. Oh, that explains it. You know. But yeah, but it was cool. Yeah. So just something something awesome. different to do. Was and the weather was, okay? The weather was really nice. It was about like it is here right now. Okay. Like it was, you know, probably a little cooler. Than it was cold normal. in LA. Yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty temperate, you know, cool. 50s, 60s during the day. So it was kind of perfect for me because I could walk and not constantly be sweating, which was a change um, <laughs> from normal life. Um, so that was cool. And then I ate real tacos because I've been told that. You know, when you go to Southern California, that's when you can get like real tacos. So what you mean? So you're saying that Taco so, Bell is not authentic? No, <gasps> unfortunately not. Nor is Chipotle. Gasp. Yeah, so I ate tacos El Gordo in mm. case like the original one in San Diego, apparently. Okay. Um, and it was really, really good. Nice. So I sent a picture to Rachel because Rachel loves tacos. She and does. I was like, here's what I'm doing right now. Ate there like my first night that I got there. She's she's a taco nacho lady. She's a taco lady. Yeah, she yeah. loves her some tacos. Um, so that was cool. So went to that, came back. It was good. So I got back and I was very tired when I got back, you know, kind of same as you. Yeah. Did um, you, uh, did you fly through like, uh, Detroit or I Texas? I flew through O'Hare, Chicago. Oh, see, that would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I went New Newark. Oh yeah. Not as, not as nice. It was a long, long Though one. Every flight I had was delayed at least a little bit. I watched so Dune like, <laughs> and I watched Godzilla. Okay. And a couple episodes of uh, mm. Game of Thrones, I think. Okay. I did yeah. Rubik's Cubes and played Bloons TD6. Of course you did. <laughs> Two Blues. things I both enjoy. I, I, was... played, I, played, I played a little Castlevania too when I got mm -hmm. tired of watching movies. Nice. Um, then I got back. I did a little woodworking because it was good to get my hands on something. Oh, there you go. Um, so I have uh, – usually when we have like visitors that come to our office, I like to make – a gift for them yeah. now that we're like doing that again now that like covid's we've had a lot know, recently kind of post covid yeah a lot of people come to see us so i depleted my stash so i'm making more so what well, i like what i like to do is i like to use like natural edge wood so i'll take like walnut or a maple slab or something that's like a good three inches thick 
And then uh, I'll have pictures that we can throw up over too. Um, and I like to just basically make them into a square and I leave like the front edge of it natural. And then I drill holes in the top for like a pen stand. So it's a good gift to get people that are traveling because it's like small enough to be able to take in a carry on or something like that. Um, but it's also like local wood to where we are, you know, handmade by me and it's like really meaningful. So that is cool. It's the kind of thing that like, you know, when I started getting back into woodworking, my one stipulation, Rachel was like, I'll support you in doing this, but you cannot start another business. She was like, you can't sell things. And I was like, oh, okay. But you can give them away. I can give them away. There we go. So it's actually good because it gives me a good reason. Yeah, it's kind of like you with your hobby. You're like, okay, I did this thing. Now what? Yeah. That would totally be me. I'd just be like making random stuff and leaving it around the house, which I still do plenty of. Yeah. Like my little welded infinity cube thing. Yeah. That like Rachel, some, someone, someone at the pen show you know. mentioned like, oh yeah, I have this old like Game Boy thing, but the save battery is dead i'm like oh i can weld you in a new one yeah yeah because like because like, like, it's a you're, hobby you're like i have this specialized knowledge that right. no it's one needs or appreciates right. so <laughs> it, i'm just going to keep on accumulating this crap because there's no other way i can do my hobby yeah um so i don't, I don't unless mind. you start a business doing it which right. is exactly how i got into all this yeah, that's not but true. yeah that's you know then you're just then you're just starting another job yeah so i like so, an excuse to do that sort of yeah. stuff yeah so i so for me it's perfect so i have made a few more of those so that's fun um also built a shelf for my office and uh, Jen last week was able to organize it because I wasn't here. So I've got, you know, a, this nice, so I had this like eight foot long, you know, cherry slab, which I cut into shelf thickness. Nice. And, you know, now I have this natural edge cherry shelf that is housing my ink above my pen cap. Oh, you got your ink up there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, because the ink is stuff that like, I'm not inking up like a new thing every day. Mm -hmm. So I don't need it like hyper accessible. So it's like up on a shelf, more display reason. That, that's kind of cool. So freeing up a little room on the bookshelf, getting some ink up there. Nice. Because I keep acquiring ink. And uh, yeah, that tends to happen over time. It does. So yeah, so I did that and that's kind of cool. Um, and then um, let's see here, I wrote out, oh, so I had a total nerding out moment with my Bloons TD6 thing, which funny thing, I'm, I'm currently watching a two hour and 45 minute YouTube video about the full history of Bloons. Because, so this is so obscure. I don't think any of you will probably appreciate this, but this is like a me and Drew thing. So when I was saying like, oh, I'm playing Bloons, he was thinking the original game, which is very different than what it is now. I would play it, it was like a Flash game on yeah. the yeah. browser. It started in 2006, but they have had 44 different versions of this game since 2006. So, so when I was playing it, it was just a monkey throwing, throwing darts dart. at balloons and you had to arc them in a certain yeah. way so you could hit all the balloons. Sometimes yeah. you'd hit another thing that would burst like maybe five at a time or something. Yeah. Ricochet. Yep. Very then simple. you show me what you're doing. It's a whole- It's a tower defense other, it's game. Tower it's defense like a game. whole yeah. different Whole game. other level, whole other level. But I'm super into it. My son is super into it. Literally, he texted me over lunch today. He's like, have you done the advanced challenge today? You know, and that so it's awesome. like- I can't wait to text honestly on a regular basis. Honestly, like okay. that's, that's like- half the reason I play this game is because it's like a good bonding thing for me and my son. But um, anyway, so I had a nerding out moment because there's one tower and I won't spend much time on this. There's one tower in the game called a banana farm, which you can you get you can earn money in the game while you're playing and then you can upgrade other towers as you're, you're playing in the level. Um, but they earn money at different rates depending how you upgrade it. So I went through and I created like this whole spreadsheet with all the different variations. Oh my God. Of the different farm upgrades and the rate that which that you could, you know, so I like, you know. Like I don't do enough of this for like business in general. For this stupid nonsense game, I was just like, I'm really curious, like what are the pay rates for these different upgrade variations of this game? Cause I wanna learn the strategy and get a little better. So I have now this massive spreadsheet. Cause there's like 60 variations of this tower depending on the paths you upgrade and stuff like Definitely that. Definitely no so ADHD here. I was like, yep, this is, uh, Jump the shark on this game for sure. <laughs> so I did that on the plane a little bit as of I was course. coming back. Yeah. Oh, that's magical. Yep. I and actually then. actually just got a text from Archer for the first time that Shannon gave him the phone uh -huh. and you know he just said, "Hi, I'm at Starbucks." I was like, "Cool, you get anything? Got a chocolate croissant." <laughs> nice. And then I said, "Oh, we had a wa waffle maker at the hotel, so I just had one of those." Nice. Bring me one now. <laughs> And I just like did a laughing emoji. That's why you're in California. I just did a laughing emoji. He said, I said now. <laughs> and I said, it'd be so getting cold though. And then he just sends me that. Like 40 poop emojis. So yeah. That's, that's awesome. Texting a nine-year-old. That's awesome. It was pretty, I was, I was actually 
it made me smile a lot. That's really like, fun. I'm texting my kid. That's weird. That is fun. Like I don't have that dynamic with my parents because texting wasn't a thing when I was that age. My mom still signs all of her texts. Love um, mom. Like it's a letter. Yeah. Yep. That's that's adorable. That's a thing. Yep. And then last thing, we are getting uh, all of our windows replaced in our house, Ugh. which hopefully will help with that stupid Asian lady beetle. Are they all, are they they all, are they all wood frame? No, they were vinyl. They're all vinyl. Yeah, yeah but I, still, I think they just had like slight cracks in them uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. I've still got wood frame ones at okay. the on the rear of my house. My front okay. ones are all vinyl, but half the other half on the back yeah. need, need to go. And well, there's like it's like old wood too. Mm. Like I can poke it in some spots and it's soft. I know. Yeah. I know. We've got yeah. a bay. We got a bay window on the back, and all those need to go. Oh uh, yeah. I know. That's annoying. I don't want to at all. I know. Window. It was expensive. It's it was not expensive. Fun. But yeah, that's like our windows are like twenty five plus years old i know so it's, it's like, like home mm. improvement loan territory it's yeah it's it's and i think we ordered them in december so it took this long for them to arrive oh man. you know but they literally called me yesterday afternoon and they were like well our stuff is in and we have somebody else scheduled but they didn't want to do it so, so they we can do not, it tomorrow that's not even a the day they oh gave like God. like two work hours notice oh but i was like hey rachel i mean you, you know i knew i was coming in today to do pencast and stuff i was like you, you find like <laughs> Staying home and getting windows. She's like, yes, let's get new windows, please. So uh, they're doing it. What, what time of the year do the lady beetles show up usually? We've had them kind of throughout the winter, honestly. It's oh, been okay. so warm this winter. So you'll so you'll know pretty quickly. I I'm I'm pessimistic about this actually solving it. This is what the um what's it called? The bug killer. What exterminator. Is it exterminator. I was like, the person that kills bugs. Um that's what the exterminator said, like we probably need to do. Is was to get replace our windows, but then we also have newer windows like on our sunroom in the back of the house, and they still get in through there. So I'm like, I think they're just uh, evil, and they just get in somehow. But they will it's find so a way. bad. Like yeah. they love my son's room, and he just they're just in there like every night, oh. like flying around and stuff. So he has to keep like a little dustbuster handheld thing in his oh. room, suck up ladybugs like every night. God. So I'm hoping that it helps, but also not. Trying to prepare him when, for when like. Do, when do you just like caulk everything shut? I swear, man. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from. I swear they're like ghosts and they just like emanate There's through ghosts. the walls. Like they just, I don't know where they come from. Ghosts can't go through walls. They're not fire. <laughs> that's right. That's a community, isn't it? Yeah, that's community. Nice. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's what's going on. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's, I had a good time. Yeah. I had a good time. All right. A couple of company updates and then stick around for the outro segment. I got some fun stuff for you. All right. Company updates. We don't have any holidays or anything coming up except for Drew's birthday is next week. So wish him a happy birthday in the comments. Not yet. Not not 40 yet. Not yet. Almost. But he'll be a year older than me for then a, mo- um, a solid month or so. You know, you know, we're the same age as WrestleMania. I didn't know that. So it, just, just so you know, WrestleMania 39 comes up. You're like, well, that's how old I am. All right. So we don't even need to remember. All we need to know is just to check WrestleMania every year. I will say WrestleMania doesn't naturally come up in my vernacular or in my spectrum. You need of, to work on your Instagram you know, feed then and get some updates. I think I'm okay. There was a great Undertaker interview recently with Ariel Helwani. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Undertaker? Yeah, he's a very, very... How old is the Undertaker at this point? Oh, he's up there. He's going to be he, undertaken but he, but soon. He, it was a be. good interview. He's very wise. Yeah. He was, he was talking about like, hey, why don't you want to come back and, you know, show up every now and then, you know, do a choke slam. And he's like, you know what? I don't want to become a parody of myself. I was like, wow. Oh, my God. Very dignified. Remarkably for, self-aware. For wrestling. Right? Because they always end up like going back in and like, oh, he did the thing that he used to do. My God. That's right. You know? Yeah. But Undertaker's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm done. Fair enough. Right? Let him be a legend. That's yeah. that. That's his outlook. I'm like, yeah. wow, what a healthy disposition the Undertaker has. Fair enough. All right, right on. I support that. WrestleMania. Um, as far as company updates, though, we do have two videos that we've done recently. We being Drew, because I've got some other videos that are yeah, coming you're, up you're soon. coming next. You're coming next. Yep. Um, Drew did one on the best pen, fountain pens for high maintenance ink. I think I might have mentioned that last pen cast, but you did. We weren't sure if we were going to publish it. We hadn't, and then yet. we did, but now we definitely have, and you should check it out. And then we have one that we should have just published a couple days before this video goes live on Top Shimmering Inks. That's right. Video. Because we're talking about not being afraid of shimmer inks. And in the next video, we're talking about which ones you should have based there on my random opinions. That's right. So hope you enjoyed both of those. You can check those out. And uh, oh, we got one more thing 
to talk about, Drew. We do have one thing. Before we do the outro. Yes. Uh, were you aware that we now have 200,000 subscribers on the YouTubes? That number doesn't seem real to me. That's a big number. It's a big number. I can't conceive of what that actually no, is. No, neither can I. 200,000. It's a lot. 200,000 people have said, yep, I like this and I want more of it. Well, there definitely <laughs> is not 200,000 people watching this right now. Right. In fact, of the you know many people who started watching this, there are significantly fewer watching it right. now. You look at the stats, you know, yeah. a couple thousand um, probably. But for that reason, we've got a little treat for you guys. Mm -hmm. The turkey hammock people who have that's stuck right. with us. That's right. And I love it when people ask in the comments, what's turkey hammock? And there's always somebody that's like, oh, you listen to me. I'll when tell you know, you know. I'll tell you what a turkey hammock is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're like, well, you know what? Let's do a little giveaway. Mm. Let's 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 provide a treat. To be fair, we have not done a giveaway in a very long time. No, because we're going to be rusty. Well, the, here's the thing: if you do a giveaway on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, the the bots come the spam out is in unreal. force. Yeah, and if you just say the word giveaway or you type the word giveaway, it just it just basically invites. Yeah. Spam. Then any comment you leave, the bots will DM you saying, oh, you won the giveaway. Give us all your personal information. Yeah, it's terrible. And, we'll do, and it's like, no, we don't even want to promote any of so that. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to tell you about it right here and now, and that's all. Yep. And we're not going to type it anywhere in the description of this video. But what you need to do is go to the description of this video on YouTube, scroll to the very bottom, and there will be a Google Forum link. It won't say anything, but it'll be a link, and it's yeah. going to be at the very bottom. And click on that link, and it's going to say Pencast Giveaway. That's You'll know you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. And it's going to ask you for your name and your email. If you fill that out, you will be entered to win a prize of one 2022 uh, Diamine Inkvent calendar box and a Diplomat Volute Arrow fountain pen. Um, we have one in medium and one in fine. I will give the first person I draw the option of which one they want. But mm -hmm. we've got a second one. So there will be two winners. Both winners will receive an Inkvent calendar from 2022 and a Diplomat Volute. Uh, these were um, white arrows with black swirls um, discontinued a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we've got two. They're great pens. The same with the Inkvent. You can't get those anymore. Correct. So pretty solid value there. Yeah. Several um, hundred dollars of value in so each of those prizes. Two know. winners there. Uh, don't say anything in the comments because if you mention yeah. this to anybody, you will be decreasing your chance of winning. So, yeah. and also I'll delete them. So there's that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So put your name in there. We will just run all of the names through a random number generator, which we do mm -hmm. during company meetings to give away things all yep. the time. And uh, how long do you think we should run this? I think uh, running it, let's run it through the weekend. So I think like through, it's good to have like a firm cutoff time. So what? what how about I draw names um, noon Eastern Eastern time on Monday? Okay, sounds good. Because I'll be here. Noon Eastern on Monday, that's yep. your cutoff. Mm -hmm. And the first person I will just email and say, hey, you won. Would you like the medium or the fine diplomat? Mm -hmm. And then the next person will just get... The other one. Yeah, please just one entry per person. Yeah. If you spam it a bunch, then we're going to delete all of them. Yeah, we can do a find sense. and replace and yep. get rid so of that. Don't do that. Um, and then... Just be uh, cool. Just be cool. Yeah, just be cool just about be cool. Don't be weird about it because then we're not going to do it again. Yeah. This is like our the last place we can do giveaways Drew, and not worry about bots. Drew and other members of the team had to hardcore convince me to do this giveaway. Not because I don't want to give stuff away to y'all. I also because... need, I needed to find a way that like could not invite spam because and i'm still skeptical because i'm just i'm just like yeah every time we basically if this doesn't years, it's been a disaster yeah basically if this so. doesn't work if spam finds its way in here then we're, we're, we're not just, gonna do it we're anymore. just done brian's gonna so shut, don't ruin it he'll don't shut ruin it all down um <laughs> yeah yeah so there we go cool. um and uh also don't return any of this either so no you get what you get <laughs> and you don't get so upset there's that <laughs> it's free don't just take it and right just accept it so check the description <laughs> all the way to the bottom click the link and regardless of whether or not you happen to be the lucky winner, anybody that's listening at this point, we very, very, very much appreciate you. Yeah. And we'll email the winner and we're not going to email everybody who didn't win. Nope. That takes a lot of time. Yep. So if you don't get emailed, then you didn't win. <laughs> but we still love you. Yeah. But any email will come from our official email yes, address. Yes, I will email so, you personally. Yeah. There you go. All right. We'll see if this will be a hot mess of a disaster. It's going to be great, Brian. I'm, I'm ready for it to fail. No, I'm ready for it to be a disaster, be but I'm hoping it's This not. is the happy oasis, remember? That's right. We'll see. We'll see.
All right, um, that's it. But we got some fun stuff for the outro here. Oh god! Ah! Oh my! All right, that pop filter is attacking Drew. Pop pop! I want to thank you all for watching. Please leave us some feedback. Let us know how you're how we're doing, how you're doing. I mean, I guess we care how you're doing. Oh, I also oh, added yeah, a feedback doing. section to the uh, giveaway link. Oh, you so if did. you want to give us some feedback there, you can. Oh, you're gonna get a lot of feedback. It's optional though. The other two are required. So okay, fair enough. But yeah, fair enough. Okay. Let us know all the things we're doing wrong to yes. upset you. Yes, indeed. Um, check out gulepens.com, our self-sponsored site uh, for all your fountain pen, ink, and paper needs. Um, and I have I, I have a lot. I have a lot in this one. <laughs> so first off- as We should have done the giveaway after this to see who really stuck around. But this will be fun. Um, so first off, it's as we're filming this, it's March 14th, which is known as Pi Day, uh -huh. 3.14. Um, I'm team cake, but I can appreciate a good pie. So Same. Um, I only included this fact because it blew my mind. Because uh, yesterday my kids were asking me, well, they were asking me if I could bring home pie today. That was really their motive. And I was like, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see if I have the energy to <laughs> go somewhere on the way home. But what blew my mind, I was like, I know they have competitions to see who can memorize the most digits of pie. Oh. And I was like, I wonder what the record is. So I asked my kids and had them guess, and then I looked it up. Hang on, hang on. I was hang not on. prepared. I All was right. not prepared. 368 digits. You're not even in the ballpark. More? The Well, the unofficial world record. So the guy, his name is Akira Haraguchi. He's a Japanese engineer, uh, and his passion is memorizing and reciting digits of pie. So. He holds the current unofficial world record of 100,000 no, digits no. in 16 hours, starting at 9 a.m. on October 3rd, 2006. He equaled his previous record of 83,500 digits by nightfall and then continued until stopping with digit number 100,000 at 1.28 a.m. on October 4th, 2006. The event was filmed in a public hall in Kisa... Ruzu, east of Tokyo, where he had five minute breaks every two hours to eat a nigiri to keep up his energy levels. Even his trips to the toilet were filmed to prove that the exercise was legitimate. Yeah. On Pi Day of 2015, he claimed to be able to recite 111,701 digits. Um, so... Yeah. Apparently he views the memorization of Pi as the religion of the universe and as an expression of his lifelong quest for eternal truth. So this guy is hardcore about memorizing some pie. Isn't that insane? I had to share that. That wasn't even the fact that I had prepared, but it blew my mind that somebody could memorize that many digits. I don't know how he does it, but anyway, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you just kind of take that. I'm not going to take run it. with it. I want it to leave my brain as know, soon as possible. I know how much you love math facts. That um, sounds like torture. But it's a good segue. So I... Um, you know, was playing around. Hang on, hang on. No, I'm not, I'm not you recovered to... from that at all. Like I'm. <laughs> well, don't recover too much because. What did he say? Type of religion it was. What, what? Oh, he just he it's it's not an actual religion. No, no. But what did he? He calls it the religion of the universe. The religion of the, the memorization universe. of pi. Yeah. The memor yeah. He's clearly, clearly very passionate about it. Do you, do we worry about his mental health? I mean, clearly his mental health is very strong. Because he can memorize 100,000 plus digits. Oh, my God. It's incredible. Okay. 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 Let's anyway. Move on. So there you go. Happy Pi Day, everybody. Oh In the past, because this is now going to go out like three days afterwards. <sighs> but whatever. Um, but I was playing around with Chat GPT and had, thought I had some fun. So uh, I asked it, uh, what's a funny dad joke that involves math? Because no, I thought, why? Why are because you doing I thought, this? <laughs> why do you? You're doing that and then this? Are you ready? No. What? This? It's 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 easy. It's easy. Ah. Uh, uh, why was the math book sad? Because he had to listen to this. Because it had too many problems. That. God, <laughs> Brian. Thank you, AI. No. Um. Okay. I have. I got a couple others. Ugh. They're not. They're not jokes. They're not jokes. This is. This will be. This will be fun. It'll be easy on you. So I asked it. Why do people still use fountain pens today when there are so many other ways of writing? Okay, okay. So this is, this is what AI crawled with all the advanced technology we have these days. Here's what ChatGPT said. Despite the advent of digital communication and various other writing instruments, fountain pens remain popular for several reasons. For one, they offer a unique writing experience that cannot be replicated by other pens. 
The smooth flow of ink, the varying line widths, and the feel of the pen in the hand can all contribute to a more enjoyable and satisfying writing experience. Additionally, fountain pens are often seen as a symbol of tradition, craftsmanship, and elegance, and many people appreciate the aesthetics and history, history associated with them. Finally, fountain pens are often seen as more environmentally friendly than disposable pens, as they can be refilled with ink and used for many years. All these factors contribute to the enduring popularity of fountain pens among writers, artists, collectors, and enthusiasts. It's pretty eerily That's remarkable. accurate, wouldn't you say? So I thought that That's was very accurate. I thought My that God. was kind of cool. Yes. And then to end on a jovial note, I asked ChatGPT, said, tell me a one paragraph story about a fountain pen who's in a forbidden love story with a ballpoint pen, <laughs> like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, wow. Okay? So you're ready to hear the AI generated sure. Romeo and Juliet fountain pen and ballpoint love story. Lay it on me. Okay. Once upon a time in a stationary store, there was a handsome fountain pen named Romeo. He was tall, sleek, and filled with deep blue ink. <laughs> I swear, I didn't prompt that. I just put it in there. All right. One day as he sat on the shelf, he noticed a ballpoint pen named Juliet. Ooh la la. She was small, but her red exterior and black ink made her stand out. <laughs> Despite their differences, Romeo and Juliet fell in love at first sight. But their love was forbidden by the store owner who believed that fountain pens and ballpoint pens should not mix. Wow. Romeo and Juliet would sneak secret notes to each other when the store was closed, but they knew their love would never be accepted. One day, the store owner found out about their love and separated them to different sections of the store. Romeo and Juliet were heartbroken, but they continued to write letters to each other, hoping that someday their love would be accepted. They didn't kill themselves. No. Oh, happy ending. So it, did, it didn't end on as much a dark note. I mean, it's it's kind of up in the air as to what wow. happens. And then that's <laughs> funky. Isn't that weird? Wow. So yeah, yeah I think yeah, yeah, it could be exciting. It can be used for some good with the right prompts and the right curation. There were a lot of stinkers in here. I I, I went through a lot of jokes before I found one even yeah. this good. So Chat GPT is not not real not real humorous. Not it's, real funny. It's still but, it's still an infant though. We've but, got we've got. Yeah. Potential. But it was pretty interesting. I mean, chat GPT has um, so far passed the uh, U.S. medical like exam like doctors have to take. Like it passed that. It's passed like various other like college courses and things like that. It's, it's pretty it's pretty crazy what they're wow. doing with it. So um, but I've definitely found some of the limits of it with like this super specific fountain pen knowledge. Sure. I'm like, OK, we, we've still got job security for a little bit. I yeah. Think. <laughs> anyway, but. Hope y'all enjoyed this AI infused one. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll play around with it. We're not looking to replace ourselves, but you know, we'll see. The world is ever changing, but we're still using pens and still loving it. So thanks for joining us. Um, we're back for the next several weeks. So you're going to get more of this. <laughs> thanks so much for watching and right on.